And here we are once again for another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, a homebrew D&D 5th ed campaign uh, in which uh, the second campaign takes place a thousand years before the first. Craziness, wildness, what am I thinking? I don't know. I'm Mark the Incaffeinated One, GM and uh, world builder and uh, general misfit uh, and game master, I guess, in this particular case. Uh, I'm joined by my players, starting on my left with Silas. Hey, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, who's currently out of spells. Uh oh. We'll see how that goes. Mm. I'm uh, Marie. Uh, I play Annie, and I don't have spells because. Technically out of spells. <laughs> And I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric, who is almost out of spells and pretty low on HP. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, we do apologize. Uh, this is something that we have no idea why, but for some arcane technical reasons, uh, Marie's sentences only come out about two thirds of the time, <laughs> so we have to interpret. I do apologize, and uh, I don't know what, what we can do. Honestly, others will have to help me remember and i'll make strange faces at uh, marie that i didn't hear annie but uh we will switch over to the map because we are indeed in the middle of a, a large space on the search for clockwinder the infamous character who apparently had some history both with marigold and possibly with uh, an ancient ethlonian once thought long dead or long undead, and now seemingly roaming across uh, Almatia. Marigold has been found, and you've in fact rescued him from the mechanical servants of Clockwinder. With his guidance, however, you're trying to make your way through the rest of this strange place to find the lovely Sandy Bell, one of the tr three bells of their restaurant, an acquaintance of yours, and a closer acquaintance of Marigold. You just made it through a particularly, um, let's say, sticky situation. Strange rooms filled with uh, what looks like some sort of parasite that's living on the ground and on the surface uh, of black ooze. And you made it through by basically carving through a space due to some somewhat acidic collections in the previous room. And now you continue to search along in the space. You've just defeated one of the strange, large, uh, semi-organic, semi-mechanical scrubbers, or whatever they happen to be, that pass through this area repeatedly. And uh, I gave you a bit of a freebie that I had thought you'd already feel, figured it out, but I will say that you have figured it out by now, that the strange doors, which seem to separate one region from another, uh, are not only activated by the presence of one of these large scrubbers, but also they had uh, uh, locations where the uh, three-fingered limbs of some of the servants could be used to essentially open them up like a key. And so you've gone back and picked out the half-melted remains of one of these mechanical servants, and they're carrying that along with you. So, how would you like to proceed? First of all, maybe you need to check in with each other to see how you're doing. I will say that Marigold looks haggard but determined. He's sleeveless, having sacrificed his sleeves and mixed it with a little bit of whatever that liquid was to form uh, somewhat murky bluish and red potions, which he claims will provide some relief if needed. That's good. I mean, I, I, I look very unscathed. I got to bump some bruises, like, I'm just a little under halfway okay. I'll live, hopefully. <laughs> what about you, Silas? Well, should be okay. Uh, well, if we've got a tunnel and a direction, let's go. Uh uh, I'll, I'll stay in the, the middle. Okay. Right, uh, 
Which way are we going again? I forgot, like... I think okay. down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For the purposes of direction on a map, we'll call it south, but uh, there is no particular south or north here. All right. Um, what I will do, or try to do, is see if I can move all of you at once. And I grabbed the other thing as well, of course. I'll move that back to where it was. Just Taking to make it simpler. Taking the carcass with us. Yeah, I'm assuming you're probably Rolling not driving. Rolling this huge thing with us. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just assuming this is more or less your, your traveling order. Once again, for those who don't remember, the big eye is actually just the perspective character that I've incre created. Oh, and I scrolled away here. Did you want me to go first? Silas? Um, I can go first. Okay. I can see farther, so. I don't mind being the first. Okay. As you move along, the nature of these walls doesn't change all that much until you get to about that threshold, which for you, Silas, is getting you far enough away from the ambient light that you can actually see a little bit better. Uh, the The walls sort of seem to cake and narrow. You you, you get the sense that um, that uh, that scrubber is only able to do a certain amount. Maybe that one was also breaking down as the walls are starting to get a, a caked sort of um, bluish green uh, residue on the side that seems to dry out a little bit. Just off to your left, though, you do see what looks like an opening that's been cut out of the side. And beyond that, you actually see some dirt. And you uh, hear a little bit of, of mechanical motion. As you round the corner there, you can see that there's something scurrying around and sort of scraping through the dirt. Uh, little little uh, um, amounts of, of sort of glistening crystal seem to be scattered around, and you can see uh, kind of scattered among, or moving amongst them. Uh, another one of those mechanical rats, its little red eyes glowing as it seems to be scurrying along, occasionally picking up a, a, a reasonable, uh, like, thumb-sized portion of crystal. Its entire body kind of splits open a little bit, and it tosses it inward, clamping it shut. Uh, we've got some crystals and a creepy rat off to the left. Do we want to check that out before we go further, or do we want to skip it for now? Well, is that where we need to go? No idea. Do we, we hear uh, what any voices? He took after. Uh, the other way, I just see more tunnel. Let's pop around the corner. Yeah, all I can see is more tunnel ahead. And how many rats? I only see one to the left. It seemed to be pretty intent on what it was doing. I don't know if you're moving particularly stealthy, but it didn't seem to, to notice or care that you passed by. Yeah, so this is trying to be fairly quiet, but... Uh... You are kind of calling back out, back and forth between people, so... Yeah. Whispering. Um, well, you can't so whisper yeah. 20 feet. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Boss decision, boss lady. I'd probably avoid uh, on the way back. Let's try to avoid any extra. Sure. We can. I'm up for that. Yeah, same. Although we have yet to actually make it back through anything we've gone into. On ahead. Um, you are noticing it to be somewhat quiet from what you had experienced before. Uh, you've been used to sort of the loud, loud rumbling of those things moving uh, here and there, and you don't seem to be hearing too much of those at the moment. Um, Silas, as you forge ahead, you can see off to your right another passage, which kind of parallels the passage you'd come from. Uh, again, there seems to be some 
element of the the uh, the actually in this case quite thick plaque on the walls, uh, green, blue, and glowing a little bit, but not enough to to change your your lighting perspective. Uh, yeah, there's a path heading kind of back the way we came. I assume that's probably not where we want to go. So let's move up. Okay, we got a junction up here. Indeed, as you kind of peer around a little bit, you can see and now hear a little mechanical uh, movement off to your left. Uh, now, if you are actually moving quietly, I will have you make a stealth check, but it's at disadvantage because you are calling back to everybody. Um, you're muted. So I can call telepathically. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. So as long as everybody else doesn't doesn't respond out loud, then you're fine. Um, so go ahead and make a stealth Thumbs check. Up. Sure. Yep. It doesn't seem to notice you. You can see this is one of the larger ones. Um, this time, there's a little bit of a greenish glow from inside that room, or bluish glow, I should say, from inside, inside that. And again, it looks like it was a, a cutout in whatever wall surface is here. Beyond, it looks like dark, uh, like uh, uh, like dirt and rock, uh, and it has been sort of carved out very, very. Uh, um, how do I want to put this? With very straight lines and very straight corners, um, and in case and occasionally you notice a little bit of a gouge into the wall, uh, and then further in you can see a larger, uh, larger mechanical creature. Uh, this one with uh, uh, four limbs. Uh, it is not a square box like the smaller ones you'd seen, but this time sort of a triangular cylinder. Uh, and it is grabbing what look like larger blue crystals and then breaking them off and putting them in uh, its own its own cavity. Um, these ones do resemble somewhat the crystals you'd seen before, a um, long time ago, uh, where you had first run into Regalesta, and there were those crystals that were growing in different spots around the room. These actually have a similarity to that. So they're clearly important for something. But I don't yeah, see it. We've got a got some kind of mechanical creature off to the left again. Glowing crystals. I think maybe they're mining them here. Uh, you start to hear the loud rumble of one of those cleaners kind of coming closer towards you. Can um, I tell what direction it's coming from? Uh, make a perception check. Do we all hear it? Uh, yeah, actually, you would all hear it. Um, it's hard to tell Nine. from the hard walls and surfaces around you. It could be coming from any direction. You don't see it coming from any particular direction. Well, that's, uh, yeah, I have no idea where it's coming from. Yeah, the best I you can say is... The map, so. <laughs> best you can tell is it's getting louder. That's about all you can tell. Well, you should find some Silas, to hide into. Yeah, Silas is going to duck into here then. It's okay. a different kind of tunnel. He doesn't think that the thing actually is coming this way from here. Okay. He'll move in a little further just to give people space to come in. The mechanical creature uh, kind of stops what it's doing. Its top part of its head pivots to look at you, um, but it seems to continue to pick the crystals. Um, the walls I it's where not. I am gross the the stuff on, on them uh they look like they have been uh, ground clearer but especially once you peek around the corner to where um, Silas have been standing that right hand path definitely was worse for wear well I I will stand somewhere that like doesn't have as much of the grime that, that does have on the walls. Okay. You can step a little bit further forward and you'll see a tunnel off to your right that you can peek into or pop into. And again, it kind of looks like it's been uh, 
grown over a little bit. Uh, you notice that your boots are sticking a little bit to the floor as you walk in that area, as if this has been freshly coated once more. Medrick? Cool. I will follow Silas and tell Mary Gold to hurry up. Marigold actually would have lingered a little bit longer looking in that previous room, kind of curiosity overwhelming him. But when he noticed the rest of you were gone, he would have picked his pace up a little bit and come to this area. I do want to have him look at the crystals, though, just for later. Um, he oh, does he, kind he of get creep, an creep forward as he hears this and just sort of half whispers, What is that? Silas will say to into his head, it looks like a mechanical person or a mechanical creature. Do you mean the creature or the sound? I was thinking about the noise, but this creature sounds interesting. I'm going to kind of poke in towards this way, kind of weave around the two of you. Uh, the noise is a tunnel, cre uh, tunnel cleaner. You don't want to run into one. Mm -hmm. And Silas mm -hmm. will walk in a little closer since the robot thing doesn't seem to be hostile. Okay. It doesn't seem to be attacking us. But in, in one of our previous adventures, there was a servant of some kind, mindless, doing a task, and it eventually attacked us. So be careful. As you walk in closer, the creature stops picking up the crystals, and then the the entire body seems to swivel in place, the head staying uh, kind of focused on uh, probably Silas at first and then Marigold on the other side. Um looking at both of you. Do uh, you want to run across the, the hallway? Yep. Okay. Once again, the sound gets very loud, kind of rolling around. Let's see if we can do it this way. Here we go. Silas will talk calmly to the robot, saying, we're just coming in. We want to take a look. We're not anything to be afraid of. Same way he would do an animal. Okay. It does kind of uh, swivel its head towards your voice um, and sort of in a grating um, metal voice uh, ask you, inquiry, purpose. Behind you, you can hear the sound of the cleaner crawling up the hallway, momentarily blocking off the end of this particular tunnel and then continuing on a little bit beyond uh, where you had been, basically. This is a safety inspection. Uh, make a persuasion roll. <laughs> persuasion, do I even have any of that? I do not. I got, I got plus one. Unscheduled. You Schedule's changed. are not inspector. Wrong shape. Inquiry, what is your purpose? And it kind of swivels its head over towards you. Collection, examination, deeper mine. It's kind of now looking between each of you. Is that you're asking it deeper mind, uh, deeper mind? I, I want, I want to hear, like, I didn't hear properly. Okay. Yeah, it, it is in broken kind of simple phrases, not in full sentences, but yes, deeper mind is what it said. Uh, collection, examination, and deeper mind. So is a deeper mind where we are right now? It kind of spins towards you. Inquiry. You do not know? Uh, we're collecting things too, but uh, we're collecting people. Have you seen, and uh, I'll give him a brief description of Sandy, and do you know where we, where, where we might find this person? Uh, make a persuasion check as, again. It seems to be hesitant to answer this question. Oh, wow. I'm very not persuasive. <laughs> And it kind of examines you and kind of looks between the, the rest of you. 
Uh, it has closed up its cavity now and is starting to retract its arms, kind of fold them up to its side. Inquiry, state purpose. You are inappropriate. I'll look around to my companions. It's like, does anybody else want to talk to it or should I do this? As you see, my knuckles like flexing around the hammer a little bit more. <laughs> Marigold's kind of walking around it a little bit. Interesting. I don't know whether he's actually conjured a spirit or created one. I don't know exactly the purpose of these things. And you can see him kind of looking towards the, looking closer and peering. And he's kind of forgotten that it's even talking. You get the impression that he's mostly looking at how it's built. We did talk about biochemical engines. This could be something like that. Inquiry. What are you? He kind of spins towards you. Collection. Examination. Deeper mine. And that is not what you are. That is what you do. What are you? Designation R B C one eight five S, and it kind of unfolds one of its what would be a hand, and you can see that it's a shovel-like uh, uh, appendage instead of a hand. Collection examination deeper mine. Welcome R B C one eight five S. Inquiry, designation. S I L A S one format format humanoid no humanoids deep mine incorrect checking with supervisor and it starts to move towards the, the uh, entrance. Andy, you're kind of blocking its way. How do you react to it coming towards you? Stop. Um, I mean, there's nothing to do to stop it, but I don't get out of it this way. Okay. It Can starts I do moving. I get an opportunity? Do I if get an you opportunity want to. attack as it walks away? <laughs> You certainly can. All right, because I'm assuming this supervisor person is not somebody we want to deal with. Okay. No. Boom. Okay. It is basically assuming that, that, uh, that Annie is moving out of the way so it's not slowing down at all. Uh, Annie, I'll have you make a dexterity saving throw to kind of pop out of its way, unless you want to literally block it. But you certainly can try. Um, seeing Medric go go to hit it, uh, block actively block it. Okay, make a grappling check essentially. Uh, that'll act as kind of getting into its way, preventing it from moving. Uh, a twenty-two definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Seven, smash. Okay. Waiting for my thing to load. That would be... Uh, <laughs> it's a 14. 14? Okay, that'll be a... don't think they have those for skills. It'll just be straight up roll. Ooh, got a nat 20. Um, so, Ooh. with the extra momentum, perhaps, of the quite... A solid hit, uh, probably right in that that triangular cylindrical upper torso bit from uh, from Medric. It propels it forward a little bit, which it seems to stumble a little bit on its legs and hands. Um, it extends its arms and legs. The, remember, they're the same sort of spindly mechanical bits that were uh, on all the other ones. This time, bracing itself against the ceiling and the walls. So it doesn't so much walk through the space so much as touch every surface it needs to to hold itself uh, firm. 
and then you also uh, hear a uh, a mechanical whale start as it pushes through. I will still count that as difficult terrain to pass through you, Annie. Um, you did sort of slow it down a little bit, but uh, not enough to stop it as it starts to move out. Uh, let's see. It would use the phrase violation, violation, calling for supervisor. You also hear the mechanical or the rough ro uh, rolling sound of that thing starting to roll backward. Hopefully, it'll roll him over. Uh, um, uh, well, you can actually see that it passes around him. Uh, you did use your opportunity essentially to try to block it. Uh, and you see that uh, this thing with its spindly arms kind of pushes itself in this weird arc shape around this thing, almost as though it was in communication with it, almost as though they were in cahoots, if you will. So why don't we roll initiative to see what happens next? Uh, let me just take a second here to clear off the initiative. Uh, okay. Okay. And you can go ahead and roll initiative. That's not good. Uh, essentially, it rolls the same initiative. It's easier that way. We have Silas. We have Medric. How much, sorry? Oh, uh, 19. 19. All right. Oops. Add a turn. 19. Okay. That puts... Uh, what's your dexterity, Annie? Yep, she should be just ahead of me. There we go. Annie, you're up first. The thing is motoring away. You're muted, I think. Okay. Uh, I will take a shot at it then. Okay. Uh. Remind me of what... Oh, no, uh. you have the night sight. Never mind. It's only Dr. Marigold is really having a hard time seeing much. Actually, no, I think he has... My business as well, never mind. My yeah, he was also there. 10 feet from me, so I have blind sight. Yep. Um, I'm going to steady aim. Okay. This is with uh, your bow? Yep. That is a natural 19. Nice. That definitely 26. hits. 26. That more than hits. Hit so well that you do damage. I do the damage. I forget. Uh, how many? I have advantage. Four dice. Okay. Nice. Big numbers. Very big numbers. Big numbers. That is twelve. Twenty-two, twenty-six. All right. Uh, as the arrow pierces, uh, kind of, it's leaning ever so slightly because it's trying to uh, kind of move itself around this this large cleaner as it moves through. And you take advantage, kind of, to let the the thing almost be parallel, and you hold on, and then you let go, and the arrow flies basically right up where the joint on one of the leg parts hits and kind of slides in there. And you hear this mechanical crunch, crunch, crunch from within <laughs> as it kind of uh, then proceeds to fall over and then roll uh, over to the other side, a, a heap of now unmoving limbs and uh, uh, body parts. Nice shot. I didn't see it, but I heard it made a lot of damage. 
<laughs> you you do hear that uh, wail, however, still going on. The sort of alarm, silent, uh, not silent, uh, voiceless, wordless, syllableless wail continue. Uh, you have a feeling that's disconnected from the creature's own existence in a way. Uh, maybe it's they're the just going to assume it got run over by the orb and they won't assume that there's intruders here. <laughs> Is the whale coming from the turn, creature? So... It does appear to be coming from that direction, yes. And does follow the tumbling creature. Well, yeah, I'll grab some crystals real quick, if there's any loose ones, and put it in my pack, just in case they turn out to be useful later. Yep, roll a d4. Four... Three. Okay. You have one large crystal and one medium sized blue crystal. And it seems this, I don't have it on the particular map, but this room is filled with them essentially. Um, you okay. can see where there's been kind of from that opening area, there's been a systematic removal of the largest ones. And then there's a, a the beginning of the systematic removal of the medium sized ones. Silas will grab a few crystals as well. Okay. And, uh, then uh, you hear the sound of the cleaner moving further away. Yeah, looks like uh, we should follow it. Well, crystals as well once my like one turn is up. Yeah. So yeah, this is all just basically real quick actions. Yeah, Silas will dash across the hallway. Okay. You can definitely sound, hear the sound coming and echoing pretty strongly from this this uh, this box that's sitting there. The box itself seems to be somewhat crumpled on the inside, but you do see kind of on the very top part uh, this sort of uh, small popped out section which is whistling. You're muted. So wait, does it look like something I can break off? Possibly. You can break off anything. Mm, this whole no, box was destroyed by an arrow, so... so. <laughs> this whole box was destroyed by an arrow, so it's entirely possible. Yeah, well, I'm just wondering, like, does it look like it's a... Like a, a heavy steel bit with, like, a whistle on top? Or is it, like, a lighter brass spindly thing? He'll try to lever it off with his staff. Uh, well, you've already kind of acted this round. You're just getting there with your, okay. your action. I didn't think we were still in combat. Um, uh, so it it does look like it's relatively thin, like the rest of the metal of these creatures as well. They don't seem to be made of heavy metal, not like the big armored creature you fought before, the uh, big armored uh, skeleton, essentially, you fought before. Uh, you do notice that just kind of peering around the corner does seem to be another one of them. Um that sort of stops when it sees where you are. Um, we got company. So I will, let's see, that would have been the cleaner's action. Medrick, you, you've taken kind of an action already and you've moved back out. So let's say you're already done. Yeah. So the two of them kind of pop around the corner. See, see located the, the sound pretty much, but seeing the rest of you, then turn around and leave. Yeah, there's going to be something else coming really soon, most likely. So we're essentially out of initiative order because whatever you might see is not around you anymore. What would you like to do? And how fast or how slow? I'll grab a handful of the... Uh... Uh, did you roll a d4, um, Silas? And one for you as well. Uh, no. Um, Annie? Two. Okay. Uh, you have the choice, one large or two small. How Which big one? is large? Uh, about this, uh, the, the big part of a baseball bat. About half as long as a baseball bat, but the big, thick, fat end. 
and which of us makes that uh, makes that choice you do okay because uh, she got one i get two um i'll take a large one then okay and Stick uh, in the sack. any a uh, handful of small crystals a handful of tiny crystals or two small crystals uh, I'll grab the tinies. Okay. Shove them these, in my pocket. These ones are about the size of the end of your thumb. Uh, all the rest that you try to grab for. So there are lots of crystals in this room, and given time, you're pretty sure you could harvest more. This is basically you going around. This one's still attached. This one's still attached. Punk, this one comes out of my hand. So that's why there's just a few of them that you've grabbed. Yep. Yeah, time is a thing we do not have right now, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, Silas will just try to smash the the whistly thing with his staff. Okay, just roll damage. It's it's not moving at all. <laughs> do you do the booming blade? <laughs> okay. And we've so, already like alerted this entire place. Why not just take it out with with like a message? You know. <laughs> so. Um... Oh, it's a, your staff is a D10 oh, sorry, damage 10. now. Uh, oh, yes. Sorry. I think... Uh, no, I would shillelagh it, but not Booming Blade. So the shillelagh does D10. And is that... That hits with your charisma? Yep. Cool. Shillelagh hits with your casting ability. Um, cool beans. Yep, no, that's 10 damage. That easily smashes through that, and you hear, kind of hear this as something is winding down on the inside. You get the feeling it probably would have died on its own given time. Uh, it's one of those things that once it's wound up and going, it just keeps going and doesn't rely upon the creature itself. I really want to know where these mechanical beings come from. They look kind of neat. We, yeah, but uh, if we go west that's where the reinforcements will probably come from if we go north we just come from there probably so which way should we go the tunnel north looks like it curves back um we could double back and go down the way with the rat that too yeah. let me just check up here see where this north one goes Okay, and as you move further and further, the thick, viscous liquid on the floor starts to become uh, a little bit more sticky and, and almost uh, binding. You can also see the green mixing with a bit of black, and the thick, uh, the, uh, thick layers on the walls are almost like, uh, like plackish coverings on top of the surface. Um, it just continues on further and further with no, no light, no change, but you can kind of see that as it goes further and further, Whatever is accumulated on the floor, it gets deeper and deeper. Marigold takes a closer look at this this thing on the ground. I'm not entirely convinced that Clockwinder made them out of out of whole cloth. The design is too foreign, even for him. I have a feeling that he's found a way to combine both a Thelonian design, his own, and some other otherworldly influence. I don't think there's anything up this way other than ooze on the ground all right so let's not go that way <laughs> and i think the rat was doing the same thing that this creature was here i mean i i think likely the only way that uh clockwinder would have gone is further on so to the west uh yeah I think. I mean, it's nice to look at Annie. It's like, you're the investigator. <laughs> anyway, at this point, they've already sent for help. Might as well meet them. Terms. They'll more or less expect us to, to freak out and stay put. Sure, Silas will uh, continue on to the west. Okay. 
Well, I think we've got another junction up here. Looks like a three-way split. Once again, the tunnel off to the left seems like it was carved out. This one has very little left into it. You get the, 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 the smallest hints of little grains of blue among the dirt and the piles of rocks that are in there. This may have been a cleaned out uh, uh, mining pit. Off hmm. to the right, uh, you do see what looked like a scoured uh, wall. There's also little bits of, of uh, blue that seem to be embedded in the walls this time. But otherwise, the whatever that ooze is is not accumulated much here. And there are larger chunks kind of of the broken um, plaque on the walls as well. Or on the floor, I should say, that have come off the walls. Um, Silas is going to look around the ground. Can I see any sign that someone may have come through like a person may have come through here you can make a uh, let's call it a survival check for tracking feet hmm. nicely done 17 uh, it does look as though some of, the, defeat. <laughs> some of the dirt has been disturbed on the uh, ground uh, and as you kind of pace it out a little bit you can see where if that thing had a longer stride that's not actually where it was i dropped it by accident um if that thing had a longer stride and you feel like it could have stretched out a lot farther, it would have made uh, footfalls kind of like that. Very small disturbances, but you could see them on fairly regular basis going through. Um, I'm thinking more like Clockwinder and or Sandy. Um, with a 17, um, you don't see what look like uh, human footsteps going that direction. Um, you do start to make out kind of across the walls uh, more in the main tunnel a little bit, but uh, occasionally in these side tunnels, uh, little divots on the walls that look as though um, maybe like these creatures or, or something else was able to to uh, to crawl along the walls uh, using them as as uh, as handholds. Um, you you speculate a little bit that perhaps it was to avoid the ooze or whatever was on the floor as much as it was for regular transport, but it's hard to tell. But nothing that looks like normal people would have made it. No. Okay. Silas meant that he hasn't seen anything that looks like people were through here, but the cleaners may have messed all that up. I don't know. Yeah. We're right. literally just uh, guessing. The best yeah. we can do. We can so use that okay. curved out spot as a hiding place if the cleaning balls come back, though. Yeah. Silas will continue on to the west. Okay. You start it's... to see that the, the, the nature of the tunnel changes somewhat as it seems to uh, have less residue and more dirt. Hmm. Well, I mean, if Clockwinder has a base of operations down here it's probably in a cleaner area so maybe we're in the right direction you so do see one going. of those one of those uh, uh essentially the the closed doorways those those uh spaces which uh block uh vision kind of right there uh where the cleaners travel through well silas will Get out his uh, robot arm and go take a look at the door. Okay. Arrow to have ready in case something's waiting for us on the other side of the door. You can't um, really see much from where you are. You'll have to move a bit closer for that to be okay. Uh, possible. Okay, and Silas will maneuver the fingers into the finger holes <laughs> okay uh make a uh, sleight of hand roll for me please as you try to maneuver this very awkward bendy limb that probably had its own uh its own internal uh controls wow rolling well today uh yeah you're able to kind He's of hook it into hand. 
good good and in, 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 in able to hook into one of those and then sort of use it almost like a crank uh, as it sort of you spin it a little bit in your hand. It's a little bit awkward to manipulate from a distance, uh, but you are able to kind of turn it a three-quarter turn and you hear a little clunk from within as the whole thing starts to unfold. You do start to see something on the other hand, on the other side as what was waiting for you launches. Uh, let's see, first of all, one of those. That's a terrible miss. That's a terrible miss. This is going to go swimmingly. <laughs> uh, let's see. And wow, these are Luckily, extraordinarily bad rolls. Luckily, uh, Silas was also ready with his shield. As uh, as through the, the outlet, uh, kind of aiming towards, uh, two of them definitely aiming towards Silas or whoever was on the other side of the door. The others kind of aiming through the area. Uh, you see small little mechanical uh, needles kind of fly through. Uh, two of them are about the size of a dagger. The other ones are much smaller. Kind of thoom, 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 all immediately coming through. And uh, make my, my shot. Certainly. Uh, which, where are you? I was looking at down. kind of this one. Yeah, we can't see like the other side on the map. Oh, pardon yeah. me. I will switch to dynamic lighting and remove. If I can. Uh, can I remove that thing? Ha ha! I did it successfully this time. As you can see, there are more of what seem like similar to the. Uh, things you had seen before, but now they are definitely armed. Uh, they have what look like kind of little weird crossbows built into their arms with others kind of having a, a full length, uh, instead of a, a bending elbow arm, they have a full length straight arm. And those are the ones that are firing the larger bolts. And I realize that no one can see anything. Here we go. Just on um, the edge of your I'll... vision. I will uh, shoot just the one that's in front of the door. Okay. It's a uh, dirty 20. That's definitely a hit. With nothing added to it because... That, 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 that's an eight. Okay. Eight damage. Pretty solid hit still. You see it kind of crunch through. This one, These ones are kind of shaped almost like a pyramid type shape. Uh, the little one that you face there is anyway. The other ones you can't really make out. Um, but Silas, you would notice that the other ones are kind of in a uh, a T-shaped block, weirdly enough. And they're starting to get more and more abstract as you move further and further in. We're fighting Tetris blocks pretty soon, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Ten-minute call. Yep. So what we will do is we'll set up initiative and we'll come back to this. Uh, to this fight just after initiative. That should be enough time for us to do that. Yeah. Uh, and I will... Those. Just one of these guys. All right. So I have Annie, Medric, Silas, and all of them. We will sort it. And the little RBAs and RBCs will go later. And probably I'll be dead by then. All right. Uh, let us uh, reconnect. So for those of you not familiar with this at home, we have a one-hour time limit currently on the... The, uh, the facility we have for, for connecting. We will return uh, in a couple of minutes uh, to the call. So please uh, uh, stand by. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll notice no time passed. Just a weird kind of wiggle of the screen as I put a fade in. So back soon. And we return back to our battle, to our battleground, where 
the have we ever established a, a collective noun for you folks i don't know if we ever have i just say the group or the party no we just have the three from no, silence and songs that's about it that's about as official as we've become there you go well the phoenix champion the singer of songs and the totally not a princess <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in this collective uh, return back. Of course, also um, Marigold kind of on the back at this point, lingering a little bit, but trying to keep caught up, uh, trying to participate. In fact, I've forgotten to put him on the initiative, <laughs> which was a mistake on my count. I don't actually have his character sheet in front of me, so I will do it this way. Wow. Okay. Yeah, he rolled a, rolled a four anyway. So, And I have too many mice. Pardon me. All right. Well, he's at the bottom of the initiative this time. Now, uh, I should describe a little bit more. Each of these does have a small glow to them that is actually intentional, not just a feature of the map. Um, it's sort of a, a little internal glow possibly coming from their power source or possibly coming from something else within them. Or possibly they don't see in the dark. It's it's hard to say at this point. You do see, as I said, um, some of them that seem to be shaped uh, in a uh, sort of pyramidal shape. Another one that's shaped in a, a sort of uh, you you would you would say like a, a plus sign, except it's also uh, uh, coming from front and back, so it's more like a six sided plus, if you will. Uh, and that's all the ones that you see uh, kind of lurking behind. They are kind of strategically located as if they were waiting as if they were forewarned um silas you are up you're muted Dave. okay let's see well i think silas let's see move there and then he's going to hunker down with his shield and just go full defense so hopefully he can provide some blocking for people behind him okay uh, that is that's, turn. that's your move in action let's see yep uh that guy that guy is going to i don't know if they have yeah, they do. Um, that one is going to move in. So you see now, recognizing one of the ones with the shovel hands uh, who had been running away, uh, now kind of moving into uh, the view, kind of in behind the other two. Uh, and it will fire off the long projectile. Long, blunt projectile. It will say... Uh, piercing damage, but it actually means uh, the opposite. I don't know if I can do... Ah, there we go. Nope. Okay. <sighs> okay. Too many interfaces. So that's the first roll and the second roll. 19 to hit. Okay. If they're shooting at me, then that's a hit. They are indeed shooting at you. Um, comes up three, and it's blunt damage in this case. Okay. And he'll stay where he is at. Uh, Annie, you're seeing now, uh, you've seen Silas kind of walk up up front, hunker down behind his shield, and thunk something rams against the shield, knocking him slightly off balance. You are muted. To move forward here. Okay. And you can see five of them from your vantage point. Um, well, uh, I will try to hit that guy there. Okay. The one in the back. The one in the back. 
teetered on a 20. Uh, that is, I don't know if that hits brain math. Sixteen. Sixteen will hit. Just barely. You get the impression that that was that was close. Okay. This, uh, plus four is ten. Ten yeah. damage. A solid hit. The arrow kind of this uh, kind of uh, jams in behind one of its one of its uh, legs, and you can see it kind of kink, and then it kind of snaps the uh, the the uh, arrow in half as it kind of stretches out its leg. But it did damage it. I'm going to go in front of Silas because I have lost no hit points. <laughs> okay. Come human shield. Uh, human shield. And I will tell Medric um to provide him the help action, I'm going to give him of, I'm going to let him know dudes and one big dude. Gotcha. Okay. Four little dudes and one big dude for some advanced warning. For those on the recording who, like me, didn't hear you, but I can read them. I can read now, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is Annie's turn. It is this little guy. This little guy is going to move in closer, so kind of between the two of you, uh, and stab at uh, at Silas. Uh, stab. No, it's I mean I to... shot that guy. You did. Uh, I think it's. Yeah, I'll make it roll an intelligence check. Yeah, it's going to stick with the target that it has. It's not smart enough to go, hey, that one might be more dangerous. No, no, it's just going to clobber away. And it is using its uh, uh, opposite arm, so not the one firing the thing, uh, to kind of clobber away. It is at disadvantage. So 20, 21 is the lowest of the two. Yep. Ka-clang. Um, for four points of bludgeoning damage as it kind of bangs away at your shield and the whole thing reverberates a little bit. Uh, let's see, that's that guy. Stop Medric. shielding yourself. Stop shielding yourself. <laughs> Kapow. Kapow. <laughs> Medric, you can hear a bunch of noise up ahead, the clanging of metal against shield. Oh, right. One, two, three, four, five. I will go to here and swing a hammer at the dude that is hitting Silas. Okay. Dirty 20. Uh, dirty 20 hits. Smack for oh max damage eleven, nice. Uh, as you kind of crunch down, it completely ignores you, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, as you plum, as you plunge your your weapon deep into it, and it comes uh, crashing down to nothingness as you crunch it. Cool. All right, and I was sitting. I only moved five spaces, right? Yeah, something like that. Yep. So I will move more. And I will shield bash as a bonus a as a bonus action, the one next to any. Delete that. Uh, yeah, I'll just delete that guy to make it easier. Okay. I keep forgetting if it uses the dexterity to hit or. Seven. Seven misses, unfortunately. As you kind of shield bash into it, but it you're kind of aiming at its thin limbs that easily move kind of out of the way. In fact, the whole limb Extra. arrangement seems to rotate around it. All right. Let's see who's next. Okay. Looks like this guy's next, so he'll close in. Uh, this one on the nearest target, kind of pushing up against the wall. Uh, and we'll go after Annie because... And he's within range. Although, yeah, and he's within range. That one uh, is going to try to bash away at the... That is a 14 to hit. I don't think that hits. Okay. 15. Uh, that is its turn. Oh, does it two? Oh. 
I knew these were deadlier than I thought. They actually make three attacks on their turn, which is dumb. Um, that's a one, so that's not going to hit. And then the third one is a 21 to hit. That one probably hits. So yeah, as they are spinning around, as I just described, and then forgot that they have three arms, it kind mm. of woo, 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 kind of spins around, and the third one clocks you for, uh, what is that? Five, ooh, yeah, five uh, bludgeoning damage. Something's still a little messed up in my calculations here, but I'll take it for that. Uh, see this next one. Next one, it can step in as well. And they're now, so they're all kind of clustering together, and you get the impression almost working together for these sort of opportunities. Uh, in fact, it will get a, uh, its attacks to do the same. Nine misses. Uh, that's weird. Don't know why it's coming up with different numbers. I'll use the ones that are appearing on, on roll 20 because that's the ones everybody can see. So all three of those miss as that one moves forward. Uh, this guy, this guy is in the thick of things. Uh, once again, attacking uh, um, Silas at disadvantage. So the first two rolls are taken together. I don't think an 11 uh, hits. That's not Silas that's in the middle of them. Hmm? That's oh. Annie. It is Annie. Well, <laughs> does a 15 hit then? That'll be the second hit. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, I yeah, got two minutes into my own screen here. So that's three points of bludgeoning, and the last hit attempt misses. Again, not sure why the numbers are completely different on two screens. I will take the ones on roll 20 to make it. on D&D Beyond tend to look cocked all the time. Use them, like... Huh. I'm trying just to use the, the Beyond 20 ones. Let me see if I can turn that off real quick does not look like that's easy to turn off so yeah <clears throat> no idea numbers i'll just have to use again are on roll 20 and see what it seems to be it's random <laughs> so <laughs> whether i'm using one random source or another at least i'll use the random source that everybody can see <laughs> so at least that's that's consistent with their experience uh dr marigold uh, is going to kind of Come up a little closer. Huh. Um, do I even have I don't have his character sheet? I don't know where it went to. So he is going to. He still had some of those, and I meant to bring that up. Uh, so uh, one moment. I'll bring up the spell. So I remember how much it does. All right. He's going to cast Healing Word at Silas, who seems to be in the middle of a lot of things. Uh, it Good. Before. I thought it was. So you get uh, seven points of health back for Silas. Cool. As you hear the sort of word uh, behind you, and the and the, his spells are a little bit odd. He kind of says, "No, no, just adjust your left arm a little bit, and when you hear that click of your shoulder, you should be fine." And he kind of releases Fixed some it. tension. Uh, that's his turn. Silas, you're up. Uh, well, looks like unfortunately we got to fight these things, so. He will move over there and booming blade the one in front of him. Okay. Actually, sorry. First, he will hex the one in front of him. No, he's got no spell slots left. Never mind. Uh, actually, how long does it make? Because actually, I still have hex around for another like six hours. Yeah. I'll just move it onto him. Okay. I'll have to look at that later. I, it seems I weird cast it at like level forever. four, so it would last for ages. Mm -hmm. um so yeah i'll hex him and then i'll i'll uh so all the damage applies 
18 to hit. That's a definite hit. And that's 13 bludgeoning, 4 necrotic, and 1 thunder. So seven, uh, 18 total. Uh, 13 plus 4 plus 1 is 18. Yep. 18, yep. Doesn't matter. That's more than enough. As it crumples from underneath your feet. And I will just remove it because it's easier as, that way. Yeah. As Silas says, I'm sorry about this. I really wish I could talk with you instead, but go slam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of crumples from within. And you see it sort of... This is one of the, the pyramidal shaped ones and you see the points kind of crimp crimp inward and suddenly it's more like a like a, a heptagon or something like that rather than the, the triangular one and then it sort of proceeds to crumble in further and further until all that's left is that little bit of light and then the whole thing goes and kind of collapses into nothingness. Leaving the nice. shovel behind. Okay, uh, no no shovel in that one. But all right. You have a little movement uh, left. And that's... No, uh, he'll leave space for Medrick to move up uh, in case Medrick gets a chance to. Okay. Do the smash. Uh, this one from way back there. Uh, now remembering that they can fire multiple times. Uh, we'll see. Let's see. Um... Yeah, Silas has kind of stepped out of his immediate view. So the next logical target is um, Annie, in fact, uh, as it kind of raises its straight arm and fires off at you. That's a five. Again, not even close to the number I rolled here. I don't know which one to believe, but I'm going to just do the believing of that one. That's a uh, dirty 20. And hits. Four... I don't even know how these numbers are the same. It's a six on my screen. It's three on that one. I'll take the three, whatever. Uh, three points of piercing damage as a thin sliver of metal comes piercing at you. And the third time, 19 to hit. For another three points of piercing damage. So a couple of these things go sort of right through you uh, and kind of pin you in a little bit uh, of the shoulders. And we are not tactical, so it'll stay where it is. Uh, Annie, you're up. You're muted. Steady aim and okay. return the favor and take a shot at it. Okay. Is that a 16 or a 19? 16. Why? 16 hits, just barely again. 16 plus more. Oh, sorry. Well, the plus more definitely hits. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> the problem of too many dice. Problem. <laughs> Twenty-two. Yeah, more than enough. Uh, as you kind of like th th take these couple little small hits and then boom, let loose an arrow that basically uh, collides with its own its own arm, cleaving that arm off, sending it spinning, and then just kind of collapses. Uh, once again, though, it it uh, it collapses, then starts crunching down in on itself until it essentially implodes and vanishes. Crunch. Crunch. I'm content with this. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you want to move. I don't know why you would want to move. I cannot. Well, I mean, you can. Same. Oh, right. You can't. All right. Medric, you're up. I go up. I smash. The one right in Nat 20. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That hits. 2d8. 4. 13 damage. 
All right. Uh, once again, this one is smashed into small bits. Uh, they go flying across the room, revealing for a brief second uh, the interior of this particular one with the crit. I figure I'll give you a little bit more. Uh, you kind of nice. crunch it open, and you can see that there is in the center of this a glowing crystal uh, that uh, as as the bits and pieces are kind of churning around it, you can see gears kind of in a particular way uh, spinning around it that seem to be attached to both of the uh, the uh, the motor motors of the creature itself, and, and then this under otherworldly spark that as the bits fly apart in this weird slow motion, uh, you see that the crystal kind of cracks and releases, and all the pieces, even though they flew a distance away, kind of turn and suck on back to it and crunch down on it, and it too uh, disappears as the as it seems like whatever this has, has a hold over the entire creature, even when separated, and then pulls it back together, destroying it. Whoa, okay. Hey, Marigold, did you see that? I'll Intriguing. ask as I take my bonus action and hit the other one with a shield. Oh, that, that misses. <laughs> that misses, indeed. All right, last one. They have no tactics. They just simply do what they do. Uh, and we'll fire, or we'll uh, pound away at... Uh, Annie, it has its three spinning fists, uh, 14 misses, uh, that's a crit, don't think it'll roll the crit damage properly, so we'll see here, uh, weirdly it critted on the damage, but not in the same way, just check here, that must mean it's plus three, so eight total, uh, bludgeoning damage, as it kind of again spins up to try to, uh, spin around and clubber you. And the third one... I would like to uncanny dodge. Certainly can. Third one didn't show up. Okay. Try rolling that again. Third one was a seven. Never mind. All right. As you kind of see it coming and you see the third... The, the first one misses. You see it lean in a little bit. You go, nope. Lean back a little bit. Just still catches you on the, on the arm uh, a little bit. Uh, and then it is finished. Marigold's turn. Um, Let him get the... one last hit in before he dies. <laughs> Marigold will move in a little bit, and he's actually kind of, again, peering closer to try to look at the creature. Um, which of the three of you looks the most wounded? How would you describe yourselves in terms of wounds? I don't think uh, Annie's taken much. So I've looked all day. It's probably me or Silas. I'll just move myself real quick so I can see how much Silas has. Uh, yeah, Silas is, uh, definitely below bloodied in the old system. Okay. Uh, he, uh, looks like he's been hit in the face with a shield a few times. <laughs> okay. Um, he tells you to, uh, open wide. This will taste terrible, but it will work. And he pulls out the bottle he's been carrying with him. It's kind of a bluish green, almost sure. algae kind of color. And he pours it down your throat. I'd like you to make a, a, a constitution saving throw. <laughs> uh, nine. Okay. Uh, you regain three hit points, but you are stunned for a round. As you're kind of trying not to... Your, your guts are kind of rolling and roiling and... Imagine, if you will, it's somewhere between uh, that really sharp sand you find at the beach and a maybe slightly gone off rice pudding. Oof. And it, it grates and it grits and it's got this chunky texture that does not feel right, but it does alleviate a little bit. Silas is dry retching uh, to the side and people see his tongue literally roll out of his uh, mouth. <laughs> Uh, See, Marigold will take a step back seeing that. Uh, just kind of like, oh, that's an unusual reaction. Uh, Silas is stunned for a round. Annie. Hello, hello. I'm going to um, and uh, stab the stabby stab. <laughs> So the subtitles say, I'm going to take advice. I'm assuming you mean take out advice. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what you said. Yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> Take advice and it's all good. Someone said Silas and it said solar system, so <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, that's a natural 16. Uh, a natural 16 uh, definitely hits because it's 16 plus at that point, right? All right. Uh, so let's take a look here. The target is missing HP. Yes. I am. How much HP do I have? Ah, look at that. Uh, and then. I've not used twice in a hot second. Okay. D4 is the, uh, it is force damage, right? Force damage, yes. Force damage and five. So a total of nine, is what I'm seeing? Uh, yes. It no, is eight. Was it? Three is eight. Five plus three. Okay. It, it came up as five plus four, and I was. I think it was force damage. All right. Uh, it is still alive, however, uh, having uh, survived that particular barrage. Oh, oh, you know what? I forgot. Um, my metric is there. <laughs> Your metric is there. Yes. Uh, Nineteen added to that. <laughs> nice. So I, the way I imagine this is, you're sort of like, you pull out vice and you're kind of look, looking there, and you hear Medric's footsteps, and kind of look over and stab as you're looking over at Medric, and it just sort of it it it, it draws the attention oh, of it so much that it's like it's like what, what? Uh, oh, uh, and once more uh, the. This kind of pierces in through the uh, the strange uh, pyramidal shape of this, or the sorry, the strange uh, uh, six pointed plus sign uh, or three dimensional plus sign, and you see the bits and pieces kind of fold in on themselves, and as they do, they seem to fold in almost as though uh, two dimensions are become or three dimensions are becoming two dimensions, and it kind of folds, folds, folds until one fold is left, which sort of just crushes, and then it'll. A little bright light as the crystal inside probably was uh, destroyed. And you appear to have no particular opposition at this point. Ow. All right. We, we should move before the cleaning ball gets back. <laughs> Marigold kind of walks over. I've never seen the tongue thing happen before, but the rest is kind of normal. These rushed potions and that extra stuff was not exactly what I typically use. Kind of pats you on the shoulder. Better out than in, though. Oh, the tongue thing has already happened before the potion. Don't worry, that wasn't you. Silas well, stands up and the tongue goes... <laughs> not comforting, but um, we're going to have to talk about that. You do hear the distant <laughs> sound of a cleaner kind of approaching a little bit closer. All right, so should we go or should we hunker down? Um, it looks like Pat is frozen on my screen. There were two places to hide back here. Okay, he's just muted now. So, so. Like, yeah, the, the, the ball will go through the door, right? Yeah, but I mean, if we hide away in those little alcoves, it's going to go past us. You do know yeah. that wherever those those doors were that blocked the entire hallway, it did seem to be a pathway that one of the cleaners would take because they moved through them. Um, mm -hmm. And there's evidence that you can so, see all around you of the cleaner having passed through. Silas, uh, Silas is going to try to dash. Let's hope this works. Yeah, same. Okay. I'll, I'll Five, try to dash. Here we go. 10, Hurry up. 15, 20, 25. So where are you going 30? to? Okay. It's At that point, there. you notice that there is a, a junction. Off to the west, you see what looks like bricked up walls. It looks like this place was, was carved out and manufactured. It is the distinct change of the surface from the uh, sort of smooth chitinous surface outward. 
and then the, the uh, bricked up wall on the inside. As you stand there, you can see there are what look like uh, empty shells similar to what these robots were, as well as shovels and other accessories. Um, you can see that off to the right, the, uh, the uh, uh, hallway continues, and it also seems to open up slightly. Well, with his dash, Silas says two, so I've got four more movement. So I see, it looks like it's blocked off to the north, or just like a little alcove. Oh, is that a, no, sorry. I thought, is that a ball? It's like, no, that's my uh, my hit points thing. Um, yeah, no. So to the north and south in this little, after this little hallway, there seems to be an opening. And in there you can see kind of what look like repair stations for those little, those little uh, mechanical creatures. Um, okay. There look like there are additional limbs, additional uh, legs, um, nothing whole. You do see what look like several alcoves where those things probably were, were uh, resting. Charging okay. station. <laughs> and that's the limit of where Silas can go, but it looks like it's just these two little rooms. Okay. Yeah. And again, they're cluttered and clustered with all these other things. I couldn't yeah, put it but I don't see any cleaners in either of these rooms, do I? Nope. And in fact, and the, the stone walls show no evidence of one having cr cr yeah. uh, climbed through. Run in. Run, run, run. There being you... clutter on the ground also kind of indicates that. That too. Mm. That too. As you move down that way and you call out for the others uh, and there's some response uh, and you're all running and loudly, um, Marigold stops. Did you hear that? Hear what? Uh, and he starts walking in the opposite direction. Run now, listen later. Here, here. And he kind of uh, calls out to you and disappears behind a corner. Uh, now at God this point it, you can hear, uh, in fact, some of you probably can see emerging on the other side uh, the edge of one of the cleaners barreling down in this location. Are you going to take now? I will say, yeah, if you're going to try gold. to go through that area, it is going to pass through that area and it will be dangerous. You can see that oh, it's, it's right in front of you, essentially. Um, I'll so wait. You can wait on the other side and hope that wherever he is, he's safe. I'm going to run for it. Risk it. I, I, uh, I can trip, like, I, I can do in a, in a turn. Yeah, but you uh, ran all so the way I'm in first, and now this is like the the the, the end of that movement. So yeah. uh, probably can still make it. It's hard to estimate, but I think it's like still... if you're like here, a second here, it's like in this corner here, twenty-five, and then I got here. Yeah, it'd be cutting it close to make it all the way over. But it would be the end of your movement, essentially, if you wanted to try to get into where, wherever he's gone. You'd still yeah. be risking it to cross across this, this channel, which is you're pretty sure where it's going to go. And on the edge of where I think the queen, like, over here, right? right. Yep, this hallway where the eye is, is also that stone where it's been built up. So I'm going to stand here and wait for it to go by, but once it goes by, I'll I'll run over. Yeah, okay. same. Okay. You kind of hold there expectantly as the thing lumbers by. You see it sort of shift its shape as it, it gets through a slightly narrow area and then start to uh, move down in the opposite direction. So as it kind of jumbles down there. And you hear it now moving off into the distance. And go, 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 go. Oops. You run over. You see it's a very small little off offset room. Uh, and in the corner of the room, you see what looks like a, uh, a large uh, rectangular cage made out of uh, numerous colors of crystal that have been woven together. Across the cage, there are multiple gears that seem to be... Uh, 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 bound up in some kind of mechanism which ticks slightly and every once in a while you see some movement here and there in different elements of this cage um, however from within and now kind of staring out uh, and trying to reach out through the the bars that uh, have gaps in them but every once in a while the gaps close off with these gears uh, you can see sandy um, kind of calling out she looks weak and tired 
She looks paler than you might expect. And uh, uh, Marigold is, is up against the side of the cage. We're here. We're going to get you free. You're damn well going to get me free. And kind of trying to peer through. You notice that she's having some difficulty seeing out from the cage. Uh, and then you also see that every once in a while the cage reconfigures all these different gears kind of shift. Sometimes it's just a little click here and there. Other times it's the whole thing starts to shift around her. Does anything look like a lock? You can investigate. This will take time. As it seems like a very complicated mechanism. It's probably about, about five and a half feet wide, about six feet tall. Within this, uh, uh, Sandy is pretty small. Third question, where this is specifically a lock, a thief's tool intelligence. Right now you're trying to figure out what it is or if there's a specific lock. That's what the investigation is. Okay. Basically, it's a very large complex device that is a cage clearly, but whether it has a lock at all or, or some locking mechanism, you're not sure until you take a closer look. I mean, it's still a 19, which is really, but still. Okay. As you look it over, you find several spots that look kind of like locks for a second or two, and then the whole thing shifts and then you, it doesn't look like a lock in that location anymore. And as you're kind of watching the whole thing, you realize that there are multiple points which could be considered a lock, but only for a second or two. It would be very difficult to unlock it, and you couldn't do it as an extended kind of uh, action. You'd, you'd have to do it very, very quick, which would make it very, very difficult. You also notice that when it uh, uh, shifts, uh, it is completely shifting the shape of where that lock was. And essentially, um, as you start to figure this out, you start to realize that this whole thing kind of is a lock, but every time you tried it, if you weren't able to unlock it the first time, you'd lose whatever lockpicks we're using because it they would snap off unless they're made of extraordinary material. Um, if it's a lock, there's a key or some other mechanism. Could the robot arm changing be it. used anywhere on there? You could certainly try. You can make yeah, a uh, sleight of hand roll. Yeah, but I mean, like to find a spot where the hand would fit. You can make an investigation roll. Essentially, this this took about uh, ten minutes for uh, to try to figure out what this this was like because there's so many places. And just as you the first few times, uh, Annie, you tried this, just as you thought you'd honed in on a lock, it shifted. So you had to keep looking over and over again uh, until you kind of clued in on. Wait, no, this is a this is a complicated thing. That's an eleven. So I'm I'm assuming I don't okay. notice anything. <laughs> Okay, there so are lots of places you could jam in the uh, the the arm if you wanted to. Nothing so specific. Been, so if it's been ten minutes, we're all up there. Are we? Yeah, yeah. I assumed everybody went over there. Yeah. Okay. And, at and this we're point, like packed uh, enough to avoid like any uh, cleaning goals. And at this point, the cleaner would have moved back by you as well, kind of making it to regular regular rounds back and forth. So you now know the cleaner. If it follows a regular path, is to the north of you. Sorry, so is she in this small little alcove with us? So uh, that's her right there. Okay. Uh, in that I'll cage. Ask. And it's there, there's not as much space in there, so it only really fits three other people. But you could easily go to the other side of the hallway um, while, um, while the cleaner is going by. You have enough advance notice. You have a place that's safe to go. So in other words, we don't have to like keep moving wow. our icons back and forth. I won't. No, and I won't bother rolling unless you. It was a crisis because you were thinking, "Do I want to do it right now?" Yeah, and you weren't sure if you could wait. Turns out you could have waited, um, and in fact, you did wait. So, well, um, people are investigating. I would like to see if there's any at all of where things appear. Okay. Um, the investigation told you that it was happening. Uh, let's say perception to try to figure out if there's a pattern. 
and I will allow you to use intelligence instead of intelligence or wisdom for this. And they're the same, so. <laughs> Okay, so perception is plus one, so 20. 20, nice. There is a pattern. The distance between the points as they come in is about, uh, is about six feet, depending on how you measured it. It always is on a different face. There are some times where it's missing and you realize it's on the bottom face beneath her. Sometimes it's on the back two faces, which you can't see. So it keeps changing about every, well, about every six or seven, six or seven seconds. Um, it is a predictable pattern, but it's a long pattern. And there are times where it appears on the same face twice. So while other people are doing their work, I'm going to be counting where... Yeah, while she does that, I'll ask uh, Sandy. Yeah, I'll ask Sandy. Did you were you unconscious when asshole put you in here, or did you did you see what he did to close the lock? <laughs> it censored the the the, uh, the subtitles. I like that. What? Oh, uh, <laughs> He's been in and out a couple of times, and I don't think I was here for the entire time. I feel really kind of weak. Uh, there was some sort of poking and prodding. Uh, it's left marks on a couple of my arms. A couple of my arms, like she has more than two. <laughs> <laughs> I now have four arms. It's really strange. Wait, I always had four arms. Now I have four arms and upper arms. Um, and uh, Marigold actually tries to cast Healing Word. You can't reach through. It's too dangerous because the, the shape of the, of the cage keeps changing, making while you could get your fingers through in one second, you'd probably lose your fingers if you left them there for any longer than that. Um, and he casts a, a spell, and you, you notice the entire cage just sort of glitter a little bit as the, as the spell interacts with the cage and then flows around, and then it speeds up. So the timing you were on before, uh, Annie, is a little bit off. Uh, it's now making it even more difficult. While you know the sequence, it can change every three seconds at the moment, at least for a while anyway. Maybe it'll slow down, maybe it won't. Well, there's a lot of metal clutter in the other hallway, right? Oh, yeah, lots of it. So I'll just go grab a sturdy piece. And uh, the cleaner rolls by once more, and you're kind of like, okay, 10, 5, you can, shush. okay, yeah, now you can go. Time it properly, obviously. So I'll, I'll grab a sturdy piece and bring it back. It's like, should I jam this in the mechanism? It might break apart. You're on, you're on mute. Yeah, Annie's just using hand signals now. Yeah. So she, she thumbs up while she's counting where things are. Okay. All right. <laughs> I will count that as giving advantage, basically your help action, as you're counting and trying to give him the right timing. You're not counting the same thing he's trying because you're counting where the locks appear and he's trying to get it into the, the open spaces. But it will give him advantage on his timing. I'm assuming that you're All trying right. to help. All right. So you what will get advantage. Yep. This is a sleight of hand roll. Oof. I have zero for that, but I think. You do have advantage, but you know it's going to be very, very difficult. Okay. Nine and four. And you manage to jam it into one of the small holes, and crunch, it gets torn off. Damn. I'm not sure if it wasn't in deep enough, or if it wasn't the right spot. Well, there's still some metal left. I can try again, right? I can give it a try. Right, your crowbar. And he's muted again. I don't I want to risk my, my crowbar. Yes. <laughs> you do feel your crowbar is stronger than the metal he's using at the moment, but you did see it cut through this metal pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, so if somebody gets me, me a piece of metal, I, I will give it a try. All right. I'll go fetch another piece of metal. Again, being careful to not uh, get run over. Silas will... Uh 
charge up the staff and say, where do you want it stuck? Um, it's an enchanted magic item. It should be tough. Yeah, I mean, we, we can try that. I just was wanting to try it because I have good sleight of hand. Yeah. Well, Silas will so, just assist. And I will cast how, uh, Guidance on Annie after I pass her the new piece of how, metal. How is Silas assisting? He's getting ready to jam stuff up wherever she tells him to <laughs> while she does her thing. He'll jam up Crazy. a second spot. Okay, that's more of an attempt on your own than it is helping her. Okay, then he'll just stand there. I'll, pa I'll cast Guidance on Annie. And then we'll try before. risk your staff before trying without risking your staff. Ten minutes. So, so before. He was a four and then hey. sleight of hand. So thirty. Nice. 30. Wow. Crushed it. <laughs> as you as you jam another one of these pieces, I of rolled in there, the uh, it does go all the way through and kind of if these things had uh, essentially elbows, it goes almost elbow deep and the whole thing grinds to a halt and you can see the bit of metal kind of and, and kind of wavering there. The pressure is mounting on it. It has locked the uh, the the pattern for the moment, but you do know that this will not last very long. What are you going to do? Find a lock, find a lock. <laughs> Take a stab at it. Okay. The metal kind of kinks a little bit. 18 plus 9, so that is... Uh, 27. 27. Uh, you find the lock. This time it's actually kind of on the, the far side, or not on the far side, but on the side uh, kind of to the north of it. You jam your, your lock picks in. You can feel the strain of the entire device weighing on your lock picks. While it's being held briefly by that metal, it is not uh, being, uh, it is still pressure, still quite a bit. Uh, but you're confident you get your lock picks in carefully, kind of maneuvering them a little bit. You're maybe taken aback a little bit as the whole thing kind of shifts a little bit as the, as the metal arm kinks even further. Uh, but then you find it is a complicated lock. And it actually feels like it's reconfiguring underneath your lock picks. So you kind of have to adjust quickly and shift. I, I will say I do have uh, experience trying to pick my ever-changing lock that can't be picked. It's true. It's true. And without that experience, you feel like you would never have been able to keep up with the, the changing, even though it's only changing by, by millimeters at this point. A hair's breadth change is enough to shift the lock enough. But then with satisfaction, you shove in and feel the lock give way. And the mechanism starts to relax a little bit. Now it is just a fixed cage. It is no longer locked as such. And you can feel the pressure that, that uh, metal piece that's in there kind of relaxes a little bit as the pressure is relieved of it. Now it's just a solid cage. How do you but open it's it? no longer changing all the time. Uh, we do it. It should be done in the next eight minutes. A little bit after. I'll just pull on a random bird. <clears throat> Does anything look like a door? Nothing looks like a particular door, no. It's just a very inter interconnected mechanism, which is now stopped. Literally has been holding her breath the entire time that that, that happened. And she's just like... <sighs> very good. Now, um, there must be a way to open it. There's like a button or a handle or something. I'll look around. 
I'll see if I can find anything. Investigation? No, I'll take the crowbar out. <laughs> okay. Inve investigation would definitely help. There's also I'm the, not a very uh, good investigator. <laughs> there's also the, the staff. Um, you can hear the rumble of the cleaner as it rolls by once more. This time now to the north. Would Silas like to try the staff now? See if we can pry the door open. Uh, I mean, your crowbar is more meant for that. It's at least got a flattened end. Yeah. It's it's there are lots of open spaces now where basically they've been locked in place. The investigation is to try to find the right lever, essentially the right spot to put it in. More than one person can be looking for this. So far, Medrick's given it a try, and he's kind of just been probing a little bit, but not finding anything very, very satisfactory. I'll give Annie guidance as she investigates. Okay. That's good, that's good, that's good. Similarly, yeah, that Silas, you're finding, oh, hard, a... finding it hard to find a, find a focus for this. That's a 16. Mm-hmm, 16. Silas will go tool around the other rooms, see if he finds anything in. Okay. Um, with a 16, you do find a probable location. It's going to be really tough. The whole thing seems to be rigidly in place. Uh, you can try moving yourself. That would be an athletics check. I will place the crowbar and get Medric to, to do the heavy lifting because I know that I cannot do that. Perfect. Okay. Edric, athletics check with advantage. All right. Heave. 18. Can you guidance yourself. And 13. Can I guidance myself or is it only for other people? You can, but you do have to call it ahead of time. You're okay. usually pretty good about the guidance. Uh, I'll say with 18, uh, that is enough to, to kind of good. start to release it. And you start to feel it kind of give way as most of the mechanical bits kind of untie themselves. They start to come loose uh, and right. you start to see the crystals as well start to glow a little bit and then tsh, one of them shatters and then that releases another space and tsh, that one starts to shatter. And suddenly the whole thing is starting to collapse at your feet. Uh, nice. and All right, Sandy, get out, get out. Uh, she, well, reach, uh, uh, Marigold reaches in to grab her, which isn't very far, and the both of them kind of get pummeled with some of the the uh, the cr uh, crystals and the gears. The crystals kind of start to start to collapse themselves, kind of little little pops of energy. You kind of imagine the idea that whatever power they had held together for this long is starting to now become unwoven and the gears are no longer connected to them. So they're starting to crumble and cr crush themselves, kind of like the center parts of those other creatures. And now they are all, uh, it is all falling apart. But it does release uh, a Sandy who reaches out and grabs a hold of Marigold, gives him a deep hug, and Marigold casts a, a couple of spells to actually, he doesn't have any spells yet or anymore. Uh, he will... Uh, hug her closely and then uh, kind of tip her back as if to give her a deep kiss and then pop open one of those bottles he's been carrying which mm -hmm. surprises her because you can see she was clearly in the position for a kiss but instead getting a mouthful of of whatever the hell that stuff is uh, and I'll have her make a this will be our last minute here but before we recall uh, Sandy has a pretty high constitution However, maybe it's the loss of whatever fluids she'd lost or the trauma she's been through. Uh, she coughs. Or not and, expecting it at all. <laughs> yeah, she coughs and gags and kind of turns over uh, and, and kind of weakly uh, vomits a little bit over to the side or tries to. It's that sort of dry heaving when your body's rejecting something but nothing is coming out. Uh, so uh, Marigold's kind of patting her on the back and Sandy kind of brushes his hand away. You, you... And we'll end the call for now. We'll come back in a minute to find out what happens to the resolution of this. Awesome. We will be back in just a couple of minutes. Do stay tuned. And with, with the cage successfully destroyed, Sandy has been freed. And uh, while her immediate rescue, her immediate uh, 
uh, solution from uh, her, um, let's just say, special friend, Dr. Marigold, may not have been exactly the the uh, the romantic gesture she was expecting. Uh, it does seem to, after the coughing has settled, allow her to breathe a lot more comfortably, and some of the colors come back to her skin. Uh, she does punch Dr. Marigold on the shoulder, which may have done as much damage to him as uh, she had been having before, but uh, he does smile and takes it into stride. And then she kind of points down, where are your sleeves? And he just pulls up the bottle and shakes it. Uh, as if that's an explanation, which you do know. He actually had parts of his sleeve soaked with some sort of some sort of medical agent that he re re-energized with. Um well, I mean, technically it's a sort of acidic bile, uh which may be contributing to why this does not have the best reaction uh as as a substance. Yeah. Uh, emergency emergency does as must uh as they say. Yep. Uh Silas, please make an investigation check as you uh, uh, decided you would have a, a better time trying to find something in the wreckage that's over on the other side. Sure. Five. Five, okay. So what you do find in there are bits and pieces, kind of reloads and structures and arms from some of the creatures you've seen before, some of those strange mechanical creatures. Uh, you do find what looks like a crossbow, a mechanical uh, uh, crossbow uh, made entirely out of metal, um, looking similar to the ones that the last ones you had uh, faced uh, uh, had on their arms. Um, it is an odd structure uh, because you load it with multiple crossbows at the same time, uh, sorry, bolts at the same time. Um, I will have a card for you, but essentially it is a repeating bolter. Um, there are 18 bolts there as well. Uh, you do find it very, very heavy to use, and you feel like it would be difficult to aim properly if it wasn't propped up, um, or if you were able to find a way to shift the weight of it. Um, essentially, it counts as an inaccurate broken uh, weapon at the moment. It can be used at disadvantage. Uh, when you pull the trigger, it fires two bolts at the same time. Uh, if it has metal bolts, there'll be 1d6 plus 1, essentially. Again, I'll send you the proper card on that. Wooden bolts are only 1d4 plus 1. Um, and if you get it repaired, it may do better. Repaired, rebalanced. Let's look at, look at it that way. Um, <laughs> hey, guys, I found this. Let me put it in a sack. <laughs> um... You, oh, Sandy, oh. hi. You also find uh, what looks like a little uh, watch. It is ticking. It's about the right size for a watch, but there's no watch face on it. There is, however, a place to wind it up, and that does seem to also be a button, but you're not sure what effect or what ability or anything it has, besides being a very interesting uh, and curious piece of kit. Dis distinctly different from most of the other things. To the there. No, oh, he has no idea what that is. So, in the sack it goes. Okay, and for five, that's all you're going to see. Suddenly, here, boom. <laughs> is your bag supposed to go boom? Um, yeah, I was thinking of having him huck it down the hallway, screaming bomb, but he probably wouldn't know what that is. Huck it down the hallway, bomb. <sighs> Uh, yes, Sandy is indeed there, kind of somewhat recovering from her, her, uh, uh, her, her cocktail. Um, now can we get out of here? She asks. I vote yes. Out of here. Sure. I mean, we know the way back. We just got to find a way to get through the ooze again at the back of that spot, but. I'd like to know more about what Clockwinder's up to, but I want to make sure that Sandy is safe. Well, we can check his little lab there, too, on the way back. That's we'll true. more time. He was yes. up to something, yes. that one. I know he was. 
He kept poking and prodding. At one point he had these clamps over my arms. That's Sandy. Hmm. Well. Hmm. Yeah. I t yeah, I think we should just head back out. The cleaner yep. drop passes on by once more. Heading now to the south. And next time it goes up, we leave. Sure. Uh, it's not so explain to Sandy how we get past these things. I wait till a certain point and then run like Kel. I'll do what I can. I feel... And she looks over at, at Marigold giving him a nasty look. But it's not vocalized that way. I feel a little off right now, so I'll see what I can do. I'll bloody well walk out of here fast enough. So you give it another couple of minutes. Uh, Nax had a question about his 17 role for investigating the junk room. Oh, I didn't hear that you were investigating the junk room at all. Sorry. You were helping to uh, dis dismantle the cage at the time he was looking at that. But you can definitely take the time in the meantime. Um, for the 17, um, okay, let's go through my notes here. Um, you find another one of those repeating bolters and another 11 uh, metal bolts. They're slightly smaller than wooden bolts, and if you were going to get wooden bolts to fit in this, they would actually have to be custom fit. So just a generic wooden bolt wouldn't necessarily do. You could, They can be modified. Um, cool. You find... Uh, oh, there we go. A um, clay bottle, um, which seems to have a, a thin, oily substance inside. It smells um, harsh, almost caustic. Mm -hmm. um, and do you pour out into the oil or you just look at it or pocket it? I'll just look inside it for now. I'll pour out like a one drop or so. I'll, I'll show Mary Gold and it's like, hey, do you have any idea what this is? Um, it has, uh, uh, the, the oil comes out with a little bit of a sparkle, especially because it's you and you give off a yeah. little bit of light. <laughs> Uh, tiny, uh, tiny little silver shards seem to be littered within it. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Marigold seems a little bit distracted. Um, I could take a look at it, but I have to do some tests. All right. And I don't, I don't have time for it at the moment. Um, just write down, uh, uh, sparkle oil and we'll figure it out what sparkle. it is later. Uh, and let's see, uh, why is that not going oh, there we go. You find a spherical, uh, stone. It looks like it's been carved into with runes that seem somewhat similar to the Athlonian letters you'd seen before. Um, okay. it is, uh, a, let's see, no, it doesn't tell me what the color is. I'm going to say it's a deep blue color. It has a little bit of a swirl on the inside, this crystal, uh, and is attached to what looks like a leather, uh, leather thong. It looks like it looked to like it's meant to be, uh, worn around the neck. Okay. And just write down uh, Crystal Charm. Uh, okay. okay. And Sparkle Oil. Uh, and otherwise you find more, <laughs> sorry, such specifics. Yes. Um, all right. And that's all you find in that particular spot. Now, all right. And I'll say during that time, you have heard the, the thing rolling, 
back up and it passes uh, by you all again. The cleaner passes up and to the north. All right. Should we go to the north? Uh, we should just head back out the way we came, I think. That's the only path we really know. That would be yeah. south and then east. All right. The we did come here like through a portal. The, uh, that is a good point. We're not sure to how to get back out of here. I would like to check that lab, but... Well, you mentioned a portal. I, I might be able to figure out how to activate it. Hmm. Well, let's go back that way so we can find in his lab, and then maybe we can head out the portal. Maybe the north path heads, like, turns around and he goes back to his lab. I'm just worried about having to go through the ooze again. Hmm. I'm worried about that, but also um, we don't know what we know about the ooze. Okay. Yeah, we might encounter a lot more of those things. We might find him. I don't know. And I don't feel like most of us are in a state that we currently could. Yeah, I'd rather get uh, Sandy and uh, Marigold out of here first. I want to make sure that Sandy gets somewhere safe. That I've does got make a little sense bit left that, to do, but that is our priority. Right. Maybe you better take me to that portal then. Okay, Silas will lead the way. Okay. I'm going to fast forward a little bit uh, to the uh, that first junction. And whether you wanted to take a different route or wanted to take the same route. So I'll just move you all there. Uh that first junction because there is a junction there and you can choose if you want to follow the route you'd come through you know that's the route to the sort of southeast there is a path that travels northeast we chose not to go last time this is one that does seem to have a tremendous amount of of uh, uh, of goo on it it did not seem to have been cleaned for a while Uh, is the goo was that looking like it was turning into the ooze that we counter, encountered before or just a completely different kind of goo um, once it solidified it was sort of a dark green on the walls and on the ceiling um, you did notice sort of strands of black within the stuff that was on the floor but you didn't investigate too much closer again it's an unknown uh, I think it'd be better if we could just get them across the ooze that's ahead of us and out. I do I do want to remind you that the way you came through the ooze before was by using the big barrel full of acid to carve out yeah, space mm -hmm. to go through. Don't have that anymore. We don't have that on this side. No, but we might be able to make a quick run across and not get hurt too badly. How about... Ish. Well... A lot of us are hurting quite a bit, though, uh, and we don't know. We don't know how. Civilians don't have a lot of hit points. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking we could carry the other two across. Sandy looks kind of aghast at this, but doesn't say anything. Uh, and Marigold is still kind of contemplating the bottles that he's got with him. Well, you was a city. Um, I mean, you saw the robot that was dead into it. How about yeah. this? One of us go take a look what's up up that way. At least. Okay. I'll go because be I can see the easiest there. And that, that way we we have a better idea. If there's nothing blocking this this hallway, at harming our, ourselves more than necessary. Sure. No, uh, so we can Silent... pick somebody up in us as Medric. And I'm not hey, doing multiple trips. <laughs> I can carry a gnome. They weigh like five pounds. Halflings. Whatever. Well, no, I thought Marigold's a gnome, isn't he? 
Uh, Marigold That's... and Sandy are both uh, halflings, I believe. Oh, yeah. No, it's Clockwind is probably Clockwind the is They have the weird names. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, Silas will head up. He can see in color uh, anyways, so that'll help him distinguish it. Okay. So he's taking the northeastern path then? Yep. Okay. Yeah, he's going to scout ahead and see. As you get to about there, um, the the... the the pools of this liquid are thick on the ground. Um, they aren't impeding you, but they are getting noticeably thicker and starting to creep up over your boots. I, I stop and stand there for like 10 seconds. Do they actively start to creep up over my boots? Uh, make a perception check. Fifteen. Is the ooze alive? It yes. doesn't appear that it is creeping up over your boots, but you do kind of notice the edge of your boots starting to melt. Okay. He'll continue to scout ahead, but it'll move quicker. Okay. Uh, yeah, as you move around the corner, like drop offs. <laughs> um, basically, as soon as you get around the corner, you do find it to be about a foot deep, and now it is difficult terrain. And you can feel it kind of oozing through your boots at this point. Uh, very, uh, kind of getting to pins and needles a little bit. It's definitely getting deeper the further in you go. Okay, he'll come back. And uh, he'll spend a minute, uh, cast a couple of minutes casting mending on his boots uh, to shore them up some. Probably and while he does... Take the boots off because the, the stuff has started to seep on the inside and you can feel your feet kind of getting a little numb. Yeah, uh, he'll tell them, yeah, this stuff just keeps getting thicker. I stopped when it started to get uh, above the height of my hiking boots, and it's making my feet feel tingly and numb. I don't think it'll be good to go there. Marigold, Marigold kind of bends down to it. I wonder what this substance is. It seems to be organic. I should be able to distill some of it given time. I wonder if I can get a good enough sample. And he pulls out one of the bottles he's emptied and starts filling it up with that. Kind of, again oblivious to everything else that's going on. Okay, uh, Silas will uh, slough a bunch of it, uh, use prestidigitation to move a bunch of it off of his shoes to clean them uh, and into the vial. Perfect. Never learned that one. Should really at some point. And then he'll go back to fixing his shoes. So more than what, what was the other way is basically the question. Well... It felt kind of similar. Um, well, the previous ooze, I stepped in it and it started to eat my boots. So I stepped into the acid stuff that killed it. And that kind of felt like this. Uh, not so much the ooze, but the acid. Um, so either this is a more acidic ooze, or this is where some of the acid is draining off into. But I don't think it would be a good guy to start a good uh, idea to start walking through acid. Yeah, yes. I generally do not but recommend. Can we get? Is there any sort of container that we can get some of this acid to the other place? Yeah, I mean, I I think I'm carrying a few vials. I assume we'll more that, than a few uh, vials. <laughs> I assume Marigold's got more, but uh... well, sadly, I don't have much more than these few that I gathered from the other room. We wouldn't be able to get more than a few drops. Certainly not the gallons upon gallons we had before. Uh, let's see. I feel like we should check the other way. There might be no way to come back the way we came. You don't really have. Are are you in in shape to to face Clockwinder right now? No, but I'm also not in shape to travel through ooze and. Eh, we could we could hole up for a bit and take a rest. That would at least give me my magic back. I'd rather not stay here any more than we have to. If any more of those things come back, says Sandy. Yeah, but right now our options are are 
One, probably facing Clockwinder and his minions. Two, walking through an ooze that wants to beat you up and eat you. And three, walking through foot-high pools of acid. I don't think any of those are good ideas. Wasn't there a another path to the north? There's a few of them, After. but we don't know what they're going to run into. Like if we if we run into Clockwinder right now, I mean, we can take a few of his minions, but gems, 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 gems. Uh, mm -hmm. Gems. The when we were with Regalasta, those healed, didn't they? The ones yeah. that were in the chamber, yes. To confirm, yes. Um. Wait a minute. Uh, they got. Oh, there we go. Uh, right now, I can't even cast detect magic to see what magic might be in them. They might do the same thing, but I don't know. While we're waiting, Silas will press to digitate everybody to clean them up. Okay, Sandy appreciates that tremendously. Um, <laughs> as she, but her her clothing looks a little bit ragged, worse for wear. You can tell that this was probably her best dress before all this stuff happened. Um, and uh, uh, in between, kind of his experimentation with the bit of goo that he's got in one bottle and. Um, he's starting, you, you see that Marigold is starting to wonder about his socks, about whether he had put anything in his socks at this point. Um, no longer having sleeves to, uh, to pull agents from. Oops, I keep scrolling away from this. Well, uh, you do hear the, the loud sound and rumble of the cleaner as it comes closer, uh, both in this particular direction. It stops just short of entering this chamber and then returns. And while it's away, you do hear the sound of others, other cleaners seeming to move about. Um, you're not sure where they are. The echoes are too vague and distinct, indistinct and muffled and shifted. But you do know that there are others about. I wonder what controls those cleaners and could we get one to go through the ooze to clean it up for us, kind of? The corpse of the, the, the contraption thing. Could is it big enough to put in the ooze and climb over? That could be an idea. It was pretty large. It did spread out to fill the entire column or, or try their call a uh, cave or hallway. It did reconfigure itself to fit larger. It was made of pretty heavy metal and chitin and other substances, so it might be hard to move, but it is something you could try. And right. if that thing was designed to move through the ooze. Yeah, I think we have a plan, y'all. Yeah, I mean, we might we'll pull pieces off of it, make like a almost stepping like a plank stones. thing across, or, or stepping stones. Um, I think the ooze was thinner than the acid that we've got up ahead. I don't think we could do this with the acid; it's too deep. But the and it's uh, farther away too. I I think that's probably our best bet. Okay. Let's start pulling pieces off of this thing. So where are you going? Heading back to the dead cleaner. Okay. As you pass by that intersection where there were the crystals, you see that two more miners have moved in and they're starting to collect more crystals. They don't seem to pay any attention to you. Okay, let's just leave those guys alone. <laughs> yep. Ah. I make sure Marigold does not go in that room, though. Shoo shoo. 
And in fact, he kind of keeps Sandy on the opposite side of the room, so she's not even being seen by them. Uh, as you pass by, remember there is the the uh, north. There's well, first of all, the sort of northwestern uh, hallway right. across from that. There's also the northern column or northern hallway there, uh, and then there is the uh, branch off to the uh, northwest where there was another mining. This time it was a uh, a rat that seemed to be mining very very small crystals. Should we check in these the north hallways? In the room that Marigold was in, there were multiple. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Two of at least two of them had that ooze. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's Silas check up that one, and then like if you guys want to check the room with the rat in it, maybe there's some wreckage or something in the... there. Uh, I'd say somebody go check the upper hallways while the rest of us start trying to push the into the ooze. We might not want to split the party though. It's okay. Silas is fine with scouting ahead. Oh, I see a ball up ahead. So as Silas disappears from sight around a couple of corners, um, you do see Silas up ahead in what looks like another destroyed cleaner. Um, you're not sure what exactly destroyed it. It does look as though it has been uh, uh, reduced in structure even more, leading to you to believe that it's probably been there for quite a while. It's not... In, it's. Not completely blocking the hallway, although it is across the entire floor and does make it difficult to move beyond. Um, hmm. Um, he'll take a look at it, see if he can figure out, like, are there burn marks? Are there signs it was smashed? Okay. Uh, Let's call that... Uh, uh, are you going to take a while to do it, or you want to just do it cursorily? He'll take a couple of minutes. Okay, investigation then. Nice. So Silas is gone for a few minutes. The rest of you are holding tight. Yeah, yeah. and trying to pay attention, like, listen really well to what might be coming from okay. either direction. Marigold kind of tries to keep Sandy uh, ahead because he knows what you've encountered that direction so he can keep looking backward. As you're looking this over, Silas, uh, a couple things become clear. One, um, it, it looks as though it was torn apart, uh, and there are large gouges in it. Um, so something bigger than it either encountered it and destroyed it, or uh, something very powerful uh, it encountered it and destroyed it. The way it's lying right now, the uh, sort of acidic green and slightly uh, black... Uh, ooze you can see on the other side a lot more strongly than you could in the other tunnel has started to seep into it and so it's basically eating it from the inside the outer shell seems to be intact however you also notice that the way it's positioned essentially is damming up this uh this hallway and so there's a fair amount of the ooze and acid on the other side which is uh 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 built up against it, essentially damming it and holding it. It's probably a, a foot and a half or two feet deep, at least at the very beginning of the dam, maybe even deeper. And you do know that these these uh, hallways seem to also get a bit deeper on their own, as well as kind of rise and fall. It's almost like they're building wells. Okay, Silas comes back and says, uh, nope, there's a destroyed, a destroyed cleaner up there, but it seems to be holding back a lot of ooze and acid uh so uh that's uh no that's a bad place to go should we bother to check this hallway here what hallway where uh, the, the north one that we just passed like the one where my icon is um sure take a quick run up i mean i'd, I'd expect more ooze but what if there isn't what if what if there's like ooze but what if, with a bridge over it yeah well, like, yeah, like, what, there were three tunnels from the original room we fought in. I think those two we've checked match the first two. So, yeah, I'll just quickly creep up. Uh... Okay, as you come around that corner and you kind of move through, it is getting a little bit deeper in terms of the the uh, the sludge, the acidic sludge across the floor. Not as deep as that, that uh, first tunnel that had been to the west of here. 
uh, but you also see that there's a closed uh, door, uh, and only a little bit is seeping through the door. So that probably has been, has stayed closed long enough to keep it from from getting further. Um, you do notice there is some some black strands within this, but they don't seem to be holding very strongly. Okay, back he comes. It's like, nope, found a door that's holding back even more of the acid. Lovely. I think our first pass path is our best chance. And you do hear one of the cleaners sort of moving a little bit closer, then a little bit further away, uh, and then kind of reversing, staying around the same distance, and then comes a little closer and then moves further away. It's way off in the distance, and you can barely hear the rumble of it. Medrick, when yeah. you used fire against the ooze last time, how effective was it? Well, the flame just disappeared, but there was not... It wasn't, it wasn't a powerful fire. What if it was one of those fire-blasting rats doing it? Hmm. Well, there is one we could pro probably capture. Yeah, sort of thinking. The rat. Well, Silas but gets would it fire on command? I don't know. All we can do is try. Silas uh, pulls out another one of his bags. Let's try and pocket this thing. Uh, Silas will peek around the corner. Uh, how far away? Uh, does he see the rat again? You do see the rat again. And there is clearly a pathway it's taken because there's a, a clearing where some of these, uh, where a large number of these crystals have been uh, removed. So it's been working. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, does it have an alarm? I don't know. The last thing we want is for more constructs to come after us. Well. You can make a history check. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember because we did. Memory we check. Yeah, that's a 12. <laughs> we were discovered by one when we get into that first fight. And you do I'm indeed remember that he had a siren call that it gave off when it felt it was in danger. Uh, the first one was broken, so you didn't necessarily see that, but certainly one you encountered later definitely did. Yeah, we should probably leave that alone then for now. And if we can't get the remains of the cleaning ball into the ooze, then it can be a backup mm. plan. Sure. Back to so the ball. I'm good. I'll... Okay. And as you creep back up that way, um, you do notice that the the acid has started to get through through a little bit thicker here. Uh, you pretty easily understand that these cleaners are here to keep keep that acid from building up, and this one now being destroyed has not been doing its job. It's not like it's overwhelmed at this point, but it is noticeably uh, creeping across the floor. Mm -hmm. I should say, not creeping on its own. It's the, it's the acid flow that's normally happening. Hmm. Um, but what's so not as thick as what the others th had been, but it is changing. Yeah. So in other words, like the acid is starting to pool, like where my character is right now, or. Uh, it's it's not pooling any particular place. The, the, the cleaner isn't preventing the acid flowing. It isn't filling the hallway like the other one okay. did. But uh, because it's no longer moving back and forth, you can tell that uh, the acid is starting to eat away at the, the walls and starting to solidify a little bit along there as well. And you can see that it is, uh, again, kind of a greenish substance, but also with uh, strands of black in it. Not All very right. coherent strands of black, so it's not like what you identified before, but... They are definitely extended uh, uh, parts of that. I'll see if I can push the ball forward. Uh, that's and a I'll strength put, check? Yeah, and guidance on myself before I do that. I... Oh, sure. thanks. Yeah, Silas will help push. Okay. 
Is that a straight, uh, straight up it. strength roll or is it athletics? Uh, well, athletics would count. Ah, oh, nice. Plus, it doesn't budge. But 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 there's. That there's would a D4 be a twenty-five. At least. Yeah, that'd be a yep. minimum. Tw it yeah. does not budge. It is too solid and heavy on its own. Damn. Yeah. Okay, start prying out pieces. Yep. And how are you doing that? Well, you can see the exposed mechanism on the inside. We did have to dig our way to and like pull pieces off to get out, so we can start with those pieces. Yeah. Because it was blocking the door, so we already did yeah. have to like pull some pieces out of the way. Yeah, we tore our way through it in the first time. Yeah, basically pushing parts to the side more than tearing them apart. I'm assuming you want to take pieces out and disconnect them entirely? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Marigold, do you have any idea how we can do this more efficiently? Well, uh, the acid's not quite strong enough to just eat through the metal on its own. I could try to... Well, no, it would take time to concentrate the acid. If I had some tools, maybe I could pull some of it apart, but I'm not really... And Sandy kind of crowbar. Sandy kind of steps up. Oh yeah, it's just like home. And she kind of wades a bit forward. You can see her feet are kind of uh, you know pushing through the acid, and it's kind of doing a nasty number on what's left of her boots. I'll take that crowbar, dear. I give it to her. It. <laughs> she grabs it from you, and starts to kind of uh, tear into this, but very very selectively. Um, you get the impression that she's had uh, some experience at, let's just say, mechanical uh, uh, destruction. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to roll, that would be that. And with advantage because the crowbar. Nonetheless, she's somewhat tired and, and it's, it's uh, rougher for her to do it. She's making a small amount of progress, but you can see that she's also fighting, fighting probably a combination of exhaustion and whatever the hell Marigold had her drink. It still seems to be giving her a little bit rough time. Hey, Give me a hand with this. She right, points at ask, Ledger. Yeah. So just tell me where to hit. Or pull, whatever. All right. Uh, and she starts to direct you. Um, yeah. You can make a, a athletics check with yes. a uh, advantage. And because she's directing you, it has a different uh, target number because you're not trying to move okay. it anyway. All right, and I'll cast them. I'll guide myself. Ignis, guide my hands. And and sit and, and Sandy also, but 21. <laughs> Ignis and Sandy, guide my hands. <laughs> <laughs> 24 total. I think you just sainted her. Um, <laughs> uh, and with her direction and kind of pointing out a couple of places, she, she seems to have an instinct for how mechanical things are put together. And as she's kind of guiding your hand and, uh, and, and giving you uh, kind of a, a, an idea of how to unbolt more than break this off uh, as it starts to come apart, she tells you a little bit about having grown up uh, uh -huh. in, in uh, the mountainside nearby with the dwarves who are very clever okay. about mechanical things, and she picked up a thing or two. She never wanted to do it again because it was greasy and smelly and gritty and awful, but... Um, she also kind of jokes that half of sometimes her customers are just as bad. So, mm -hmm. uh, and she admires the cro the cro the crowbar and thinks that she needs one of those for the uh, for the inn. It's slow going. Uh, others can try the same sort of thing. If you have uh, uh, other tools you can use, you can make it faster. Uh, Marigold is uh, kind of admiring and useless at this. Uh, not really being a mechanical sort at all. Uh, um, use vice to try to like unscrew things. Okay. Again, with with uh, with Sandy's help, you'll get advantage of trying to do that. Does Silas have a, an opportunity to jump in here or some something? To um, Silas, oh, Silas. Uh, takes one of okay. his uh, sacks. And he's going to cut it up into strips and tie it around his feet. Uh, he's going to take a quick trip up there and see if uh, 
the uh, basically tying uh, cloth around his feet is going to last for any duration if he steps into that. Okay. Scouting ahead a little bit. Yeah, just going back to where the use was. Sure. Um, make a perception check as you start moving through. How did uh, Medric do? You got a 21 plus 3? Yeah. Yep. You're making good progress. It's still going to take about 10 to 15 minutes for each piece that you want to pull off, but you're starting to starting to lose some of the large plates that were on the outside. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice. Um, as you're moving through, you're, the, the cloth is helping a little bit. It's, it's not going to last for very long. It's not really helping it not seep through. Um, but you do notice that long strands of the dark ooze are starting to stretch out beyond the uh, opening a little bit. So you're starting to see it a little bit ahead. It doesn't seem to be responding too much. It's, you kind of gather that maybe those are probes or those are early warning devices more than they're active elements of the ooze. Uh, but you, you feel like it's still there and it's still probably hungry or active or whatever it was, whatever it does. Uh, yeah. and it's starting to move a little, you, you also kind of, with that role, I'll give you the idea that, um, it knew something went in this direction. And so it's kind of trying to find out if it can find it. Mm. Um, That's kind of unnerving. So am I <laughs> walking through the ooze or walking through the acid? Mostly the acid, and you can kind of avoid sp stepping directly into the ooze. Again, there's sort of long, dark strands that are running through it. Distinct are those dark strands there at the beginning, or no? Uh, you didn't notice that, that before, no. Okay. But they don't seem to react as you pass by them, and you, you can avoid stepping into them pretty easily. Uh, does Silas estimate that having the extra cl pr uh, cloth protection if that would be enough for us to quickly run across the ooze? Um, let's call that an arcana roll. Okay. It's definitely Nine. having an effect, but you're not sure if it's going to last all that much. And it wasn't the acid that you were as worried about so much as the active ooze. Mm -hmm. The acid is relatively mild comparatively it's not burning your boots off at this point and you've stepped through it for quite a while it's also not quite as deep around this bend as it was in the other ones as the other routes you were looking into and you kind of feel as you're walking along that some of it has solidified along the bottom so it's filling in some of the the wells that have been created before okay silas will head back and see how they're doing okay about uh, 15 minutes have passed. So you've had a good long look around and you've now been able to pull three large sections of this. They're almost shaped like shields. They're basically long sections of metal that were slightly curved and attached on the outside. Uh, on the uh, inside, they're basically uh, melted together pieces of metal with uh, little, little struts left in, which you can actually use as handholds. They're extraordinarily heavy. Uh, on the other side, uh, unless you choose to remove them, are the uh, the hooks and teeth that were there to grab onto the outside. They are extraordinarily heavy, and it'll be very difficult to remove them individually. Um, and they could, to Medric's mind, almost serve as an offensive shield. These things are yeah. very, very heavy, and one person alone probably can't carry it or won't be able to carry it very quickly. Um Oh, sorry. I, I'm having a hard time keeping up with the different directions. Sorry. What was the role for uh, Annie? Um, I, I, you didn't tell me what to roll. You just said I would roll at advantage. So I rolled oh. an 18 plus whatever mod for using vice as a screwdriver. Oh, yeah. I, I assumed that you had passed. I thought I had read that already. That's why there are three panels free, because there were three different groups working on them. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Um, uh. Yeah, so you, you basically lose three large panels. There's two more panels there that you could you could try to extract, but they're very, very heavy. Um, and you can use them either as shields, you could use them as uh, walking walk paths, essentially. Uh, they are acid resistant on the outside. You know that because they haven't melted. The interiors are not, which is why the other one, basically once it was breached, is just starting to get caved out. 
All right, I'll start carrying some over. Okay, where are you carrying them to? To where the ooze was. All I'll, I'll just go up. meet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Basically, we're dragging them this way. Yeah. Trying not to make a racket, but it's probably like not. Yeah. It's probably going to be a racket. Uh, Silas will. Uh... Trying to help. <laughs> Uh, Silas will mention on the way back, uh, I think I have an idea. What? Um, he, uh, he lifts up a foot and shows the, uh, the cloth sacks that he wrapped around his feet. Uh, we can use these to, uh, to, uh, absorb some of the acid while we're walking through. I, th we might end up having to fight that ooze. Uh, if we need to, we can, uh, when we're going across, we can drop those and stand on the things to fight from so that we're not standing in in acid wait fighting it um, well i think this time we might have to since we don't have anything to keep it away because it looks like there's an ooze that's giving off this acid uh the acid flows outwards from it and it's it the ooze spreads through the acid uh, so right now we're just walking in some of its acid but once we get up there we'll actually be seeing it uh and last time we went through it did take a swing at us uh, so i i think even putting these down it's not going to be just there's some acidic ooze there we, that we have to walk over i think it's going to attack us great but these would be good platforms to fight from uh, and don't be sick there. well they want well they're acid resistant and the ooze itself wasn't that thick um but uh yeah on this particular side that is something you had noted is that the the acid and the ooze aren't very deep here partially because the divots were being filled in and partially because it hasn't accumulated like the other places but it was starting to grow all right well let's keep dragging the things then yeah uh silas will get down and start tearing up uh more of these sacks uh, he carries 10 bags with him uh, okay. so he starts tearing them up to wrap around people's feet before we go all right classic uh bread bags in the boots mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, i got to me bread bags i'm gonna make her through the dirt all right um would three of the panels be enough well who's carrying the panels again they're too heavy for one person to carry I can okay. carry one end. So Annie's going to give you a hand on that, and you're dragging them right. up. It's it's heavy work, and there's almost no way to be quiet about it. It's it's kind of like screech. You, you're you're moving furniture at this point, uh, basically. But I will say that after about uh, uh, another another 15 minutes or so, you've been able to drag them, half carry, half drag them up to where you yeah. are on the map right now. Basically, the quietest way to do this probably would be to like walk it yeah yeah like along its edge like clunk 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 yeah yeah well again it's 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 landing in the okay. it's la landing in the 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 uh liquid that's there so it'd be like ker splash ker splash ker splash mm -hmm. uh well versus squeeze. yes that's yeah. true. that's true it's not a screeching metal it's a splashing metal at this point sure all right <laughs> Uh, yeah, I say you've got those accumulated there, and you've been able to get the the bags uh, uh, trimmed up and ready, and so everybody's feet are covered. Uh, it's a little bit awkward in running in bags; they have very little traction. But at the same time, uh, feeling only a slow uh, dissolving from the acid that's around you uh, makes it feel, I guess, a little bit better. <laughs> you do know that you can't stand in these for very long; they're not going to last that long. All right. So what happens next? Where's the ooze room anyway? I'm just going to move my character back up a little bit. So you remember and can you see actually a couple of bits of metal left behind there that basically okay, right, was right. the edge of where it was. As you get to this point, however, you do notice those strands that uh, uh, Silas had seen before. And as you move through, the strands quiver a little bit. And you That's can see good. some motion in the room ahead as... It seems as though the entire room is starting to uh, uh, 
come alive almost as all of it seems to have very easily noted your, your presence at that point. There's yeah. something moving in there. How far away are you? Uh, 10 minute mark. See. Yep. So, okay. Silas, watch out. Yep. Okay, what's the plan? You see the roiling room ahead of you. The entire surface is black. Whatever acid is, is there is actually underneath this or absorbed by it or displaced by it. You're not sure what. Well, so we've got to cross, what, 20 feet? Uh, looks like it. Okay, let's just uh, toss this one, as uh, this first piece, as far out as we can. All right. Just bloosh. Right. <laughs> so uh, Annie and Medrick, one of you will make it with advantage. Let's have an, uh, an athletics sure. check at this point. <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably... Ignis, better. guide my metal Slave toss, knife. I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, that too. After, after this adventure, yeah. <laughs> so guidance... Oh, wow. That's an advantage, right? Mm hmm Plus the guidance. You got this. 14 total. <laughs> okay. Um, it lands where the robot bit is, basically, and that's where I'll place, so you can see it right there. That's where it lands. It only was a few feet ahead of you and kind of lands very heavily on that, splashing Crap. into the area. Well, it's good to have one there. Let's see if we can... Where is the robot thing? Because I don't see the robot thing on there. Uh, right there. Right okay. just below That's where the eye is. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yep. you don't see it on that map. I okay. Think I moved it off. Yeah, sorry. Well, then... Yes, let's go on to this one and try and toss one a little further into the room. Okay. Make another roll. Ba basically, we... I think Sorry? we would have like piled them all uh like closer we would have piled them all closer like in this room there to yeah. yeah that makes sense so another roll at advantage or uh another roll at advantage all right against, guidance again uh annie and against does a 15 hit annie or a 12 hit uh, uh medric nope hits me 12 plus hit you? yes okay 14 to throw the thing in the, in, in the acid again uh annie you take seven bludgeoning damage and nine acid damage as a large pseudopod comes flying out it happens to sort of ricochet off the metal panel uh and you rolled a Okay, you didn't roll for the second one to come... Oh, wait, no, you did roll for the second one. So you get the same roll? Yep. Wow, okay. Uh, you so basically to... there's one here now. Yeah, you, you <laughs> managed to move another one. So you have two of them kind of side by each. Uh, two platforms to stand on. That's fine. That's fine. It gives Kenny us... Uh... Uh, I will do... And Kenny Dodge works. As you kind of like try to... I like how it came up as Kenny Dodge. Uh, you uh, try to uh, uh, use the heavy metal uh, plate as something to for it to collide into instead of yourself. Uh, however, you do feel that acid, and now the things are active in the room. Uh, now we roll initiative, but we're going to have to recall in order to do this. So we will reconvene in a couple of minutes uh, with the question of, do they make it through the use again? Hopefully. <laughs> probably probably some of you will anyway and we're back starting to settle into this this initiative based thing not necessarily a combat depending on how you choose to to uh, do it uh and i will roll once for um basically marigold is going to be holding his actions to help uh sandy get through and i will give him initiative anyway and I rolled four ones on initiative. That's surprising and well, kind of annoying. All right. Well, uh, it also helps I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. So 
just to keep him in the loop. Uh, there. Okay. So, uh, you have just been able to set down another one of these panels. At that point, essentially, they got their sneak attack because you didn't know where it was coming from. Uh, but now, um, we have a Silas up first, able to act in a moment, if you want to. You're muted at the moment. Yep. Where is Silas? Silas, Silas is... is... Yeah, okay. well, he technically was right under Annie. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he's so, going to... Uh, I'm just going to put... Uh, uh, the walls in this are actually restricting my movement enough. It makes it hard to move things. Yeah, I'm going to also move um, that to the One, two, map layer. Um, that's right. I'm just going to move the two objects to the map layer so they should be underneath everybody. And I want to move... Uh, Medrick, you're actually up front there. Yep. And Annie would be right behind him. So right there. Okay. Just one moment. I've got to uh, adjust I've got to adjust the map a little bit yeah. here because some things for I thought putting it to the map background would put it on the very background. And it does not seem to be doing so. So I'm going to send that to the back. It might just be because they're lit up. Just a second, I will get rid of the lighting. Uh, wait, which one did I grab? Please uh, wait for the momentary technical problems as <coughs> freaks out for a second trying to figure out where those things have gone. Uh, okay, you don't need them. You know that that is... Uh, Accidentally grabbed the map too, so you know. Yeah. There we go. Go to the map layer and the object layer. Go to the map layer. All right. I don't know why it isn't choosing those ones, but I'll move that out of the way. So that they are no longer shining. There we go. A little easier to see now. Whew. There you go. Suddenly, complication. All right. Uh, Silas, you're up. You do have the other two kind of in your way, but they are standing mm -hmm. on top of the metal metal boxes or metal uh, pieces. Yeah. Um, now, do I see the ooze, or is the ooze considered to be the whole room? From what you can see, the only thing you can make out is that there is a black covering over everything. So you don't know if there's a central locus or not, um, but you do know that there are. It's the tentacle came out of nowhere, essentially, from where you from your perspective, or everywhere, depending on how you think about it. Okay. Well. Hmm. There's really not much I can do because uh, the the two uh, spots are already occupied. Uh, you can hold an action or ready something or uh, holding something. an action wouldn't give me anything to do though, unfortunately. Yeah, my map is uh, super weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's completely different. Completely. Like I, I see it on the game screen, but. Oops. What do you see that's different? What of you should be able to see it all. It's like I'm in a different area, or people like anyway. I'll, I'll take a picture. Hold on. Hmm. Because you should see. Do you see the echo of the ping that I'm putting on the map right now? Yeah. That's where you are. Yeah, little square room. Unfortunately. Yeah, my roll twenty shows something completely different. Uh, you might want to reload then, just to make sure. Okay. Um, it is just a little slightly square room. Um, so, uh, it's like a room. diamond shape room. There you go. Thank you. That's a better term. Launch game. 
Hmm. It's square on mine. Weird. Um, it's because you're cut off. Your vision is cut off a little bit. You don't see the sides. Oh, yeah. I can see the sides of it, but they're just little alcoves. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't think there's anything Silas can do from here. Okay. It, it's working now. I just had to turn it off and on again. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Yeah. First line of uh, of self defense in tech uh, technology. Uh, well, what would you like to try to do? Or me? Nope, we're still in Silas. Okay. Well, like I said, I don't like I can't get to it, so I don't think there's anything I can do. Uh, well, you could always prep to run. You could uh, prep to cast a spell. You can. Um, I suppose you can technically prep to dash. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't have any spells I can use, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I'll prep to dash when people are out of the way. Uh, actually, where's Sandy? Sandy and Dr. Marigold are behind all of you. Well, I will go back here. And when there's an opening, I'm going to help by moving Sandy up and possibly attempting to throw her to somebody. <laughs> okay. Sandy looks a little indignant, but is not uh, complaining too much right now. Uh, Annie, what would you like to do? We still need to get the third piece there, so I'm going to go to the third piece and basically for Medrick to get there to help me move it. Okay, yeah, you're going to hold your action waiting for him to, to help out. You don't have to put it one square ahead with a successful roll or a better roll than a 14. Uh, you can potentially get it one or even two squares over um, if you wanted to. Yeet the metal plate. As, you certainly could. As long as we get, like, because the, the ooze is mo like mostly in the this room, right? Oh. Don't move the, this this room is it's filled like, with it, and all you saw otherwise well, were long tendrils. If we get one there, we can jump to here and get out. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, jumping range is based off of your strength, I believe. I haven't looked that up in a while. If someone mm -hmm. wants to look that up in the meantime, that'd be great. It is equal to uh, no uh, your long distance jumping range. If you can move at least ten feet, is equal to your strength uh, rating. Your, score, your actual full score. Okay. Uh, so, we have... Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll go back to where the other piece of metal is and wait for Madrick so that I can help him. I kind of assumed it was right here. The other two were basically in the hallways. Yeah. They moved up, and now the third one. All right, uh, Madrick, it's your turn. All right, I will... Go there, help Annie. Okay, so the two of you move up. Yep. And we know Go that, back uh, here. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> there we go. I'll just draw a little. Ignis, piece. guide my yes. plate throw. Guidance advantage. Fuck. Okay, that's a 14 plus. That's a 14. You plus... <laughs> two again. <laughs> 16. So it's a 16 instead of a 14. So uh, <laughs> it is a 16 rather than 14. That is that is true. Which is good. That that is better. Uh, however, it still only gets you one more square. So oops, yeah. I didn't mean to grab the world. I hate when that happens. I hate when that happens because <laughs> it's the wrong screen. Ay, 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 ay. All right. What I meant to do was draw a third little square right there. So hopefully all of you can see the little purple square. Um, so yep. you have three of them right yep. in a row. All right. That was your action. Uh, most of your move. Yeah. All right. It is, uh, Marigold's turn. Uh, they're still in the way, unfortunately, Silas. So they, yep. um, don't quite have the space. Marigold's going to kind of be inching uh, a little bit closer, but still waiting for the, the, the uh, coast to be clear. In the meantime, these two things. Uh, let's see how badly this rolls. 
That is an 8 trying to hit Medric, and an 11 trying to hit Medric. They did no, not succeed in, in hitting Medric. Basically, I kind of imagine you, you've got that big thing there, and you're kind of batting away these large pseudopods that seem to emerge out of the, out of the ground. Yeah, like, huh. Um, huh. Silas, you're up. Um, um. I'd say you could, with difficult terrain, get by a Annie and Medric, but it wouldn't give you the full 10 feet for running your full distance. Um, that's fine. Uh, Silas is going to pick up Sandy. Okay. That pick will make it harder to jump, but you can you can do it. It's okay. He's not planning on jumping. You can't uh, do that anyways. One, two, three. I should say... Well, three, four, five, six, and dash seven. Uh, he's just going to run through the last bit. Okay. Curse splash and whatever happens there, and then uh, push into the area beyond. Is there seven, eight, nine, okay. 10, 11, 12? I think he can get there. Okay. As you kind of step into that open space where that thing is, uh, where that thing isn't, I should say, or where the metal isn't, uh, your foot does kind of sink through first through the, the uh, ooze and then into the acid. The bag does give you essentially resistance, so you take two points of acid damage. Uh, okay. And um, when you are here, you feel the ooze closing in around your feet. Uh, it is going to be a contested... Uh, 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 Sorry, it's going to be a, a an escape. Uh, dex, sorry, strength saving throws, I'm trying to say. Brain. Um, to pull out of it, or it will have you restrained. Okay. Uh, DC uh, is 12. It's fine. I get nothing for strength, so I don't succeed. You are restrained. You're held there. Your feet are kind of bound up by the stuff you've stepped through, the ooze. Okay. Uh, I yell at Sandy... Uh... Jump for it. Okay. For whenever uh, it's her turn. Her turn comes around the same as Dr. Marigold's. I kept them the same. Yep. For sake. Uh, so that's Silas's turn. Oh, uh, uh, I'm going to, can you move the eye? Cause I can't, oh, sorry. Uh, I can oh, move okay. my character, but I can't click on him in order to, uh, wait a minute. I'll put the eye I right can't. here. Uh, there we go. And then, sorry, minus two. There we go. Okay. Okie dokie. Uh, Annie, you see, uh, you see charging through uh, Silas, who steps through and unfortunately got stuck. Uh, Silas is stuck in the way. Yes. Uh, it would be okay. difficult train to it, move It froze for a him. second and then so. <laughs> so just to catch you up, uh, Silas is stuck in the ooze carrying Sandy. Um, he stepped into the part where there is no metal. So it is difficult terrain to move by him, and you now know that stepping into the ooze means it has a chance to grab a hold of you. I wouldn't be able to jump through him, though, is the issue. Okay, that will be difficult, so it will be a... Uh, if you're going to make a That's running jump... Just, just jump on me. Knock me into the, uh, knock me into the um, ooze and just keep going. From where you are right now, you can't get 10 feet of running distance because it would be difficult train to move through Medric. It's going to back up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jump through Medric and That's through what, That Silas. was my plan, but I currently can't is what I am saying. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I hear it now. So I'm going to back up here. Okay. Because... Okay, it's at disadvantage because you can't really tell the locus of the uh, yeah. of the ooze. Oop, jeez. Dropping things. The ooze now owns that dice. So, <laughs> 21. 21 with disadvantage? Dang. Double, double 14s. Yep, that's definitely a hit. Nice. Okay. Uh, and... People aren't within range, correct? Uh, Never mind, it wouldn't. Yeah. Anyway. 
Okay, but that is still a five on the dice, so that comes to nine. Nine points. Just for clarity's sake, are you shooting left or shooting right? Um, here. Okay. Whichever um, side that is, my brain did not know. <laughs> uh, and this is just a regular arrow? Uh, yes, from a magical bow. Okay. Uh, the arrow kind of goes bloop, and there's a little around around the arrow as if it as if the the impact happened but it's hard to tell the the full impact of it uh, cool and i will move out of the way so that other people can get their running start okay uh that's medrick's turn you're muted here we go yeah mom was talking to me earlier or had the tv on super load all right so uh, is Marigold going? He hasn't yet. He hasn't had the opportunity okay. yet. Partially because people were in the way, partially because he's waiting, waiting and seeing. All right. Um, I'm going to back up Okay. and tell him to go before me. Because otherwise, like, I want to be the last to, to cross in case somebody, like, gets stuck. I can pull them out. Okay. And as for... Uh, you did see that when uh, Annie fired the arrow, it did seem to hit something? Okay. Right. So, can I reach to where Annie fired the arrow? Uh, not really. <laughs> there's nothing really that you can see that you notice. In particular, okay. there's no locus of of attention, but you did see that it had an effect. It hit vaguely All somewhere right. over here in this direction, but that doesn't really help you that much. I'll move ahead one. And again, because the and swing is somewhere the in that floor. Okay. Okay. Uh, the user is covering the entire floor. Swing in that random direction. What? Okay. Make it with disadvantage. All right. Uh, wait. No. Swing. And. Okay. I guess that nine was. So fifteen hit. Fifteen hits. Hey. Five damage. Okay, and what kind of damage is it? Uh, bludgeoning. Okay. It's and I like, don't know if I want to like smash it with the shield though, because it right now it's kind of like punching a bowl of water. Yeah. You're not really sure if it has much impact, but you see a little splashback. Okay. And then I will back away. Okay. Uh, it is both Marigold and Sandy's turn. Sandy's going to try to make a leap. So she's going to tell you, uh, 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 Silas, it's like, okay, on three, I never thought I was going to say this, throw me. And she's going to try to push <laughs> off at the same time. So I'm going to count that as you helping her, if that if you're sure. willing to help her. <laughs> that is. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, Why don't you go face first in the acid? So pretty good on that one. Uh, 19 total. Uh, so no, she manages to kind of leap off uh, again because it's a more complicated thing than just running and jumping. Uh, yes, yeet the halfling, fine. Uh, and she will make it to here, uh, just on the other side. She lands uh, in the uh, mostly just acid on this side of it, uh, but seems to land pretty pretty uh, 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 carefully, if you will. And then takes a couple of steps back into this room. She's kind of cautious because she doesn't know what's in that room. She's hoping that she's not running into more danger. Now, Marigold. Uh, Marigold will squeeze on by Medric. And then kind of, he goes to kind of push up his sleeves as if to make it kind of that gesture and realize he hasn't got sleeves anymore because he sacrificed them already. And will make a running jump. It will be, again, difficulty... Uh, this time yeah, it's this a disadvantage because he has to jump by Silas. And Can I get him advantage? Well, Can I tell uh, him like, okay, step in that 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 specific spot before you run. Feel free to step on Silas's head. That's more well, of an Annie thing to do, but uh, okay. <laughs> if you were physically um, helping him, that'd be different. But can I eat him? Wait, I'm too far away. Damn it. Um, after Silas tossed uh, Sandy. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll fall forward and down, so he's on his hands and knees. That's probably going to hurt more, but 
Uh, uh, okay. That that'll make it easier for people to run across. Make a strength Let's saving throw. Use my back. Difficulty fifteen. <laughs> oh, we've lost someone. Hopefully, Andy will come back in a second. Wah, wah. Internet, please. Okay. You you kneel down and you feel the ooze calling uh, crawling over you. You are now uh, restrained. Yep. By the ooze. That's what I figured. Uh, <laughs> yeah, mute and hung up. They are terribly close to each other. Um, so will be back in a moment. Well, that means there's no longer a disadvantage for uh, for Marigold. It's just a straight up roll. Thirteen. It's not a difficult roll in this case because there's not as many obstacles. Hup, 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 and lands just on the other side Yuck. of of uh, of Silas. Kind of lands heavily, and uh, yeah, everybody's in the wrong place. I'll fix that in a second. Uh, and then takes a couple of steps back. Uh, in this case, however, as he takes a step back, there is a swing out for him. Oh, and a hit. Oof. No. As he takes a, uh, a bunch of damage. Let's see what he got here. All right. So seven of the uh, seven bludgeoning and seven acid damage, uh, which kind of knocks him a little bit off his feet, but then he, he is able to continue and stumble along. As you saw a pseudopod kind of come out of the, the uh, gray space and was just within range for him to be hit by that. Um, now we have maximum entropy here. Everybody's in the wrong place, so I'll just quickly... Uh, try to. Sorry, I went to unmute to to mute myself and I. No worries. No worries. Technology is. Well, it it is. Just leave it at that. We also lost uh, Silas's camera, so we're almost there, folks. The the ooze is melting all of our technology. <laughs> um. However, Dr. Marigold has now made it successfully over the other side. So has Sandy. Now these things uh, are going to... Hmm, they have someone captured. That's nice of them. Everybody else is outside of range. Yeah, they so, found a nice tender morsel. They indeed have. So with advantage, uh, the first one is a 14 hit you. No, suck it, so, pseudopods. And even with that, the 22 does, however... Um, uh, let's see. Uh, restrained. Can I use my? Sh uh, no, no, it's a both no, reaction. You no, can't. Mind. You can't move or take actions. Uh, I don't know if you can take reactions. That's a good question. Yeah. No, that's fine. I'd have to take two reactions to do what I was so thinking. Three bludgeoning and five okay. acid. As you now see the 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 tentacles, uh, especially Medric, you can see it full on. The tentacles are basically beating at where you presume Silas is, but Shit, all you really good. see is a shell of black, which is covered over him. Probably bad. Yeah, very bad. Uh, it is Silas's turn, however. Well. Unfortunately, restraint does not leave you with a lot of activity. Nope. Uh... I assume it's acrobatics or athletics to break free? Uh, in this case, it has to be athletics. There's no way around it. Okay. Nope. Unfortunately, you are still bound. Mm-hmm. That's my turn. All right. Actually, I will shift the hex to the ooze. Sure. It is now uh, strength uh, pen penalized. Okay. I'll say that you get advantage on your uh, athletics attempt then. Okay. Because this is the only the only way that hex actually uh, helps in combat, except for the damage, uh, is for breaking free of things. Nope. Yeah. Unfortunately, well, I guess we could have taken the two rolls you made before. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, either way, unfortunately, you are bound up by this thing, and it is starting to pull in on you and starting to suffocate you. Yeah. You, you now find that you have to hold your breath. So, 
start counting the breath holding things. It's not a problem in this system generally, but no, keep in mind I... that speaking would be bad right now. Thank goodness I got telepathy, although I can't see them. Actually, mm. that might stop it. Uh, Annie. And that will be my turn. Okay. How how are you going to give uh, Medric? What advice do you want to give Medric about getting Silas free? He's in that area somewhere. <laughs> Unfortunately, bro, Annie, yo, bro, bro. Uh... Annie didn't actually see him go under. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I, I, I'm I still a lump. Eat him. Try to pick him up and eat him. I'm, I'm assuming you'd not eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, it's so very broken where the lump up is. Gotcha. Right now, so. Where the lump is. Am I the last one on the side? Or... No, I need still there. Okay. And no, you're okay to get across, I, right? I can jump. Okay. So, um, do you want to hold your action? All right, it's still Annie's turn. Or is it my turn? Would I really be You could hold your action to dash. I can't see that. And would I be able to jump as part of the dash? Yep. I didn't catch any of that. <laughs> so, yeah, your camera froze. Yeah. Oh, good. It's not just me. Okay. Yeah, I didn't actually hear anything from her. <laughs> Technology. I, I can't hear anything. <laughs> you might want to type it out and enter the chat. Yeah, we're getting like one frame every 30 seconds and no audio. Uh, if it's in the regular chat, I can't check it right now, so someone else will have to, to point it out. Yeah, there's nothing yet. I think I see your typing. Perfect. Perfect. That's that's what I had hoped you were saying, and I was right. So I'm not a mind reader, but I'm a lucky guesser. And now your camera's unfrozen, so we're all perfect. All right, so you're holding on. Higher computer for that. froze. <laughs> oh, Oof. okay. Uh, so Annie's holding on. Medric, what would you All like right, to do? All right, Silas is in danger. So um, I will run across, jump to the other side of him. Okay, so make an athletics check. Uh, I'm suffocating, I'm suffocating. Ah! <laughs> and let's, let's say I'm, I, I gave myself guidance first. <laughs> Sure. Ha! All right. Jump. Well, even without the guidance, you very easily make it over the black lump, which was once your friend. And I will reach into the black lump and pull him out. <laughs> or try we to will remember out. your sacrifice, black lump. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can make an athletics check with advantage. All right. As you push your hands through. 13. That was bad. As you push your hands through, uh, you do manage to hold on to something solid. Now make a strength saving throw. Dirty 20. You manage to pull your hands back out, but unfortunately not with Silas. Crap. But you are not not uh, uh, held by the device or by the creature either. That is good. Uh, Grappled, I guess is the word I was looking for. Uh, however, you do not manage to get him out. You do have, uh, that was your action and your movement. Yep. Um, hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Can Annie, uh, should I get out of the way for Annie to land more easily or? 
she doesn't have a place to land right now. Okay, so I will back up, back up one more. Okay. Hmm. All Any right. silence is in trouble. <laughs> All right. Coast is clear. Annie, you can take your, your action now. Yep. Uh, go here and... Actually, sorry, there would be one thing that happens. It's so not going to change this uh, action at what, all. Roll to jump? Uh, athletics to jump. But as you pull away a little bit... Uh... Actually, no, you're fine there. Uh, so Annie makes the jump. Athletics check. Hoop, hoop, hoop. Uh, Part of this is too that the the uh, the ooze mm -hmm. you can imagine is also reaching up a little bit, so you want to jump through it. So it's a fourteen. Okay. Um, I will say you manage to jump over. However, it does get a grab attempt as you're jumping over. So make a strength saving check with advantage. <laughs> Okay, uh, that is uh, 17. 17. You managed to pull free of the strands that are reaching up from the black lump that was once your friend and managed to land on your feet on the other side. Thank you everything for advantage because the other one was a one. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Dr. Marigold. Uh... Dr. Marigold runs off in the other direction. I think and I know you hear him. Uh, let's see. Let's see how far he can get. He can't get very far, but he can get to there. Uh, and he calls back to you, Medric. Yep. There's still one full barrel back here. It's worth a shot. And Sandy kind of comes over wondering what the hell's going on. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's see. They have one. They almost had another. So uh, pseudopods come swinging out of the muck. One towards Annie. 14 doesn't hit, I don't think. Nope. And the other with advantage at uh, Silas, 17. Does a 17 hit? Well, see, something I keep forgetting is I have the Ring of Virginity Sagax. Which has a reaction mm. can cast shield. It's true. So I will cast that, which will bring my AC to 22. Perfect. So there's a little nice. bit of a bulge in the black bubble as the shield takes effect, lifting you, uh, lifting it from kind of the pummeling action, if not necessarily from the being held action. Uh, good. That was a very smart use of that item. That is them. Silas, it is your turn again. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Nope. Yeah, you're having a, a hard time struggling against this. Uh, wait, no. Uh, it is hexed. That is with advantage. That is a nice oh, yeah. thing. Uh -huh. as, as you push up through and are no longer restrained by this substance. It's still gathering around your feet, so you're still uh, essentially um, yeah. grabbed by it, but you're no longer restrained. But that was my head action. comes. My head comes uh, popping out. <laughs> Slight blue glow surrounding um, him from the shield. Can I move? Uh, you are still grappled, which means okay. it's restricting your movement. Um, no problem, and the strength. Check uh, strike save would have been my action, uh, yep. so no, that's about it. All right, do I take any acid damage? I am in the acid, I probably should be. Uh, not as such, um, essentially, the acid is displaced from you because it's grabbing you entirely, okay? Uh, and it only does acid damage when it hits people. Uh, Annie, you see your friend suddenly emerge from the blue, the, the black bubble, and you realize, oh, yeah, he's still alive. Good, good. I'm gonna Annie, grab his arms and fall backwards. Annie <laughs> okay. looks down at me and says, 
Thank you, Silas. Uh, we'll always remember your sacrifice. And then just <laughs> shoves my head back down in the acid. <laughs> it's a boring conversation anyway. Get back in there. Um, <laughs> all right. So essentially you're doing uh, an athletics uh, attempt to try to pull him out of it. I'm using all of my body weight to do so because I believe I can do it without doing it that way. I'm going to give you advantage because uh, Silas can help you as well with this. Yeah. Uh, he's a participant now, whereas blindly he couldn't be before. Empty. Hey. There you go. As you manage to kind of, uh, and we're going to have to say that. What? Yeah, you're all what? kind of. Actually, uh, um, uh, Medric, make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> I'm going to say that Annie and Silas are both prone Two. basically in the same spot uh, and it knocks you over as well. So you're also prone sitting it's like, in I didn't chair. think she could do it. And then, then it's like, boom, it's like, whoa. Yeah, you're all Damn, toppled together in this lifting. one spot, but no longer Stepping held by the. forward to help. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, Medric, uh, at your feet uh, is the combination of two of your friends. I mean, I, I can get still up. use my movement to get up. That's true. That's true. It's difficult terrain in the area because you basically are sharing a space at the moment. But yes, you can use half your movement to stand up. Uh, and I'll, if you want I'll to... take a step into this corner there. Okay. There you go. There. You brought your friend out. Now you can let him go. <laughs> Leave him to the elements. Uh, Medric. I'll help. I'll get up myself. So that's half my movement. And Silas, are you okay? Like, do I have to pull him further away from the ooze or no? He's not in being held by it at the moment, but he is uh, okay. restrained, or he is uh, prone and probably quite injured. All right. Um, he will get a... I'm covered in goo. That too. He'll get a level two heal. Or... Man, you full casters and all your spell... <laughs> level two cure wounds, so 1d8 plus... Holding out on us. <laughs> I was saving them in case I we mean, ran into a uh, clockwinder. <laughs> yeah, when your cleric is saving a spell that he can cast heal with or any sort of that's a good thing. That that's that's yeah. not appropriate behavior. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's like <laughs> I'm just saying ow. More, at least you got more than like four spell slots. That's the warlock's way. All right. So uh, 10 you get plus 10 hey. eight hit points. He coughs out a quick thank you. No problem. <laughs> All right, now let's get away from this place. And I'll use the rest of my movement to get away from this place. Okay, so half your movement is left. Okay. Um, let's see. Marigold is moves over to the barrel and then looks back and sees you there. Uh, and then it's like, I can't do this on my... Oh, are you free? Uh, and Sandy is going to move over, kind of move over into the corner here where she can see everything in the room and hopefully nothing's going to sneak up on her. Uh, meanwhile, back down in the room, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, nah, could have, but didn't. Um, a pseudopod comes flying out towards Annie. Um, 10 does not hit. A pseudopod comes flying out towards Silas. A 4 does not hit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, so trying to, but it clearly out of, out of the range at the moment. Silas. Run away. Silas stands up and sputters and walks over here saying, where's that barrel? Well, you get about here and then the two pseudopods come charging out at you. Sure. Uh, 22 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit even with the shield. Um, and three bludgeoning damage, seven acid damage. Okay. And then that the other one. That just undid the heal. Damn it. An 18 to hit does not, uh, well, the shield's done now because I, that was your turn. So it only lasts the beginning of your next turn. Mm -hmm. No, it goes to the, the next one, but I've got another charge. Although for uh, that one, I'm just going to use the shield, uh, the the shield I'm carrying, not the shield spell. Okay. That'll bring me to 19. Okay, good. Uh, as it batters away at you, kind of last parting shots. And then 
you move the rest of your distance out of its range. Where's that dr- Where's that barrel? Over here. And Marigold it, will It didn't gesture. kill it last time. Nope. But it'll hurt it. All right. Annie. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Size will dash over and get ready to start pushing it. Okay. And as you dash away, you see just a limp little... Dash, uh, disengage. Uh, yeah, <laughs> do what I little, need to do. <laughs> little, little pseudopods reaching out in your direction, but nothing comes even close. All right. Uh, dash and disengage, so you're done. Uh, Medric. I'll just meet up with the rest of the people by the barrels. Uh, okay. Should we do this right now? Uh, yes. Revenge. It seems like uh, a little bit of effort. All right, whatever. It almost <laughs> ate me. Okay, I'll do the thing that I did with the barrel the first time, and hopefully somebody will assist because they are heavy. Mm-hmm. So, Medric uh, and Silas. I can assist. Well, I think both Medric and Silas are there as well. Um, Marigold. I'll, I'll let Silas get this one. Marigold actually goes <laughs> over and picks up some of the armor pieces of the creature that was there before. Mm-hmm. Uh, hold for a second. Grabs a couple of the right. armor pieces and gives a large chunk to Annie. I think if we direct it, I think we can do more harm. Great. Sure thing. More harm, good. <laughs> so Push barrel now. Uh, as you drag the barrel over, uh, we'll just put you in place, basically, to to show you that you're there. It's a little bit cramped, but we'll accept that. Uh, so, Marigold will be directing you. Mm-hmm. Um, so you get, uh, well, you have advantage because there's two of you anyway. Um, for you, Annie, you'll be making a uh, a acrobatics test with advantage marigold will be making one as well treat it like an attack roll and i'll so, give any guidance they okay. just watch your actions okay for the other two i need uh athletics rolls or one of you can make it with advantage or you could both roll that's up to you uh yeah uh, you can make it with advantage because my roll's right. gonna suck okay so first i'll take uh medrick's roll this is to get the, the stuff dumped in the way that uh, uh, Marigold Eight is suggesting, which is a little bit at an, ang- at an angle. Uh, you do have advantage on it. Yeah, 18. 18, is that with advantage? Perfect. Yep. It's angled the way he wants it. Now for Annie and him to do the acrobatics right. checks with advantage. Nice. Uh, His first idea wasn't so good. How about uh, Annie? 21. 21? Uh, As you're able to direct it, uh, Annie, you remember where you had fired before and it had some effect. So you kind of direct part of it over in that particular way. Basically, you're splitting the streams rather than flowing it through the middle, which you knew was effective in dividing it before, but didn't actually destroy much of it. You kind of divide it off to the two sides. So uh, go ahead and... uh, uh, roll me uh, 3d8. And I'll roll one myself. It's not great. Suck it, monster. Fifteen. Fifteen, okay. Um, as you're pouring stuff in on that side, uh, Annie, you see it start to sort of bubble and twist. And then you see the, the black surface on the uh, east side just sort of turn into a uh, kind of half solid and stop burbling and twisting after a moment. You believe that the thing on that side is dead. The other one seems to fight back and lash back. In fact, lashes out. Uh, it will lash out twice, but probably not hit. That was for 
uh, mirror gold, and that was for the other. Now, it lashes out blindly and is able to hit, hit anything. Um, you believe that it is thrashing in pain and possibly dying. You can choose to do more. This is all you have of this base, that this alkaline substance. Um, Marigold is going to back up and not be part of that. Backing up. Yeah, probably a safe idea. It will take a swing at Marigold as he backs up. Uh, still doesn't hit. Okay. He's a high, he's a high dex kind of guy. Uh, Medric and... Offer to try to get in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Step lightly. So, if you want to try to attack it, you can. If you want to just get away, you can do that too. Yeah, I'll just get away. Okay. It doesn't have a way to, to go after you. Silas? Unless, uh, wait. Uh, we're not moving the barrel, but the barrel back, the barrel back are we? No, you kind of just tipped it over in this area. And there's more stuff left in there? No, that was all of it. Okay, yeah, I'm backing away. Hmm. Or I'd attack it with... Uh, hold on. I could try to Sacred Flame it. You certainly could. I will do that. What's the saving throw? It is... Dex. I think it's dex i could be wrong let me check it is dexterity okay okay Ooh, my flame comes down uh, it 18 does to have hit. advantage because there's no specific location all oh, right right uh it's a save uh okay. what was the... <laughs> however wow the second one was terrible is it 15 enough to save i i think down somewhere so yeah it'll it be your normal save so okay. yeah you see it kind 15, of twi I think. twisting and pooling and, and unnaturally moving liquid, kind of carving out a space for the flame to burn on its own. and doesn't seem okay. to catch it. Um, you also do remember, well, no, it's sacred flame. You all remember that, that fire didn't hurt it much before, but this is yeah. sacred flame, so that's different. Um, uh, and if it can't or, move, I could just like sit here in sacred flame and until it dies, right? <laughs> you can certainly try. Uh, right now, I just want to see if Silas has another thing that they that he wants to try. Uh, yeah, Silas's anger is mostly sated, but uh, just in case, uh, he is going to try. Like the barrel's pointed into the room, so he's gonna uh, booming blade the uh, bottom of the barrel, hoping to smash any last little bits of it out into the thing. Okay. So we'll count the the thunder damage, but not the uh, the other. That's a twenty one to hit. Twenty one definitely hits. Well, uh, seventeen because disadvantage, but still seventeen hits. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there's six thunder, and it uh, has three necrotic because it was hexed. Well, except you're not hitting it directly with a blade; you're hitting it with the wood. Sure. Well, I'm just... I'm attempting to hit it with whatever acid covered wood is in there. But yeah. Okay. Uh, roll me another uh, d6 acid damage then. It's not acid in the in that actually. It's alkaline. Okay. So that does another nine points of damage. You can still see part of it uh, swimming along. You can see now parts of it are starting to separate and get swept up into the acid that's there. It does seem to be still alive as a creature. Yeah, that is... that's fine. All right. So Silas you're retreating? Pulls back. Okay. okay. You retreat back let's... into the other room? Yeah, let's search the room and see if we can find uh, any way to make the portal work. Also, Silas is looking for bags of rubies. Uh, you do remember that the portal is not in this room. Nope. Yeah. But his lab was over here. It's true. So you want to take the time to search the lab? Yep. Okay. Silas is specifically looking for bags of rubies for rat, for robot rat eyes. Um, okay. You can start to try, toss the room around. Uh, you guys did look through here before and didn't find too much, but you have a little bit more time. At least you think you do. 
so I will take investigation rolls from anybody who's looking in there. Uh, what is, is, I guess Anne's going there too? No, I'm keeping an eye out. Okay. 22. Come to me, bags of rubies. Okay. Um, you start searching around, you find all kinds of little bags. A lot of them have small gears and some, uh, some screws in them as well. There's a, a small set of tools that you find. Uh, they look like they're well-made. They're very small in stature, uh, as if they are uh, designed for smaller hands, but they seem to be fine. Uh, you do find what looks like a pair of goggles. Um, again, sized right now for a, uh, a gnome-sized person, but they could be uh, different. Uh, they seem to have very odd uh, gems in them. And then you do find a small bag uh, with, uh, roll me 2d6. There we go. Nine. With nine small rubies. Woohoo! As the entire room begins to quake and shake, as if the entire uh, place is starting to shift and move. Um... Why do bases always start to fall apart before? Uh, we need to you, get out you, of here. You hear a sloshing from the other room and realize that the acid from the other uh, tunnels is starting to back up into that area. The whole place is tilted somewhat more now. Silas? Um, yes? We gotta go. <laughs> okay. Well, Silas will pocket uh, the various things that he found and uh okay just make note of um clockwinders goggles yep yeah i was i need 10 minutes to cast detect magic so i don't have time for that yet yeah uh, you do hear the sound you do hear the sound of one of the uh uh cleaners the one you had first encountered kind of moving back and forth we better go this can't be good. Where's the portal? This way. Okay, you do hear the sound of the approaching, uh, the approaching cleaner. Um, Let's just wait and see where it stops before we go forward. <laughs> yeah. Um, you wait a few seconds and it passes basically right through that area. Okay. Yeah, I think this is where it stopped before. Run up and um, through this door. One second here. Don't get too far ahead of me. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. There we go. Ah, it's there. Because uh, I have to move this through. And then it turns and comes back. So as you're there, you can feel that it's coming. You can actually see it coming there very rapidly. Uh, Robot hand. Yep. Okay. Slide of hand roll from whoever's using it. You have advantage because you've done it before. Pass it, pass it, pass it, pass it. Uh, <laughs> Silas slaps the hand down. <laughs> So natural 19 plus 9, so 28. Nice. Yep. Without even really slowing down, you know where to jab it. You reach out far enough that the, the opening is actually open enough, open enough for you not even to stop moving as you travel on through. Uh, I need to update where the eye is here or just pull back a lot. Because the eye is still way back behind you guys. I'm going to take everybody on a tour. Um, oh, somebody grabbed the eye. Perfect. If you can move the eye up to where you guys are. Yep, working on it. Okay. Since the, the walls, door is... so. Yeah, no, I get that. Uh, <laughs> all right. Since the, uh, the doorway is open, you all can pass through. You remember which direction to go from there, looks like. It was yep. in this room. And as you're passing through there, you do note the cleaner passing right outside on his pathway. Uh, and there you stand before the inert win the inert portal. 
It sadly smashes Sandy on its way through. <laughs> Not quite. Everything is pancakes. So it comes down to Marigold's role to see if he can actually come uh, figure out how to make this thing happen. Is anybody going to try to help him, and how could you help uh -huh. him? Silas will assist with Arcana, and the fact that he saw it work before. Seems reasonable. As you start I'll to, cast to describe guidance on Marigold. It, uh, okay. I will add that in as well. Um, so it will come down to his role, and then he'll direct somebody else to do something. So here's his role, plus advantage. Pretty good start. So 19. Um, he tells you, because you're holding on to it, uh, Annie, I need you to move the arm. Just put it right here, twist, half turn, and then put it on the other side and twist and half turn again. Can you do that? And you'll get advantage on another sleight of hand roll. I'll cast Guidance on Annie. At this point, the whole room is shifted, and it's now you're, you're sliding across. I will have everybody make an acrobatics check. Seven. Four for the sleight of hand. Okay. You, you jam it into one side. I will have you make the acrobatics check as well. Yep. Medrick and Silas, you go sliding across the room as now the southern wall is now up. Okay. Uh, bracing yourself easily, uh, Annie, you managed to to, uh, to hold on without sliding too much. Still quite able. Now the second roll. This will be your last chance to get this active as the room starts to roll once more. Acrobatics checks from everybody okay. again as well as the sleight of hand with advantage. And I'll cast Guidance on Annie again. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a... Oh, I forgot about the Guidance um, in, in that. Um, that's a natural 20 for the nice. sleight of hand. And as you and then, jam the hand in yeah. and turn it, it clicks around the edges of this little crystal start to light up in sequence. It takes about 10, 15 seconds for this to happen. Duke, 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 as, as the room continues to rock and roll. But the portal whoosh, comes into existence. Uh, as nice you feel now, you the whole room starting to shake. And even the walls, these artificial walls in particular, seem to be stressed. And you look out at the doorway that leads to the outer area and realize that the doorway no longer lines up properly. As if this artificial room that was built off of the other side of whatever is on the outside is no longer aligning properly. The portal is open. Who's through first? Probably Marigold Sandy. or Sandy. Okay. Marigold will reach out to Sandy, kind of pick her up off the ceiling now, because the whole room is kind of inverted a couple of times. Uh, and uh, this time uh, he will give her a kiss for luck, although she stops him and checks to make sure there's no bottle this time. <laughs> uh, and then uh, kind of just steps through, trying to be dainty, and then the room shifts at the last uh, minute and she kind of falls left. through. Uh, no, we get like 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, I we go, will call go back. next. We will call back for this dramatic moment. We'll be back in just a second. All right. All right. Leave everybody on a, a cliffhanger and in the dark, apparently, because I didn't move the screen here. Uh, that's super important right now, but I feel compelled to... Uh... Oh, wow. Sorry. I'm fighting with technology again. I shouldn't be caring. Uh, anyway, Sandy has just jumped through. One of the ten crystals on the outside winks out, snaps, cracks, and uh, and uh, disappears. Uh, Marigold steps through, kind of immediately following Sandy. A second one winks out. A third one starts to flicker. Who's next? I shove Annie through. <laughs> okay, Annie definitely <laughs> dives through. Uh, two of the crystals go out. That's not good. And you can okay. feel now the entire room starting to shift and crack. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> yep. Silas shoves Medrick. I get shoved. Or I, I take the hand and I walk through. Or I <laughs> jump through in a very hurried manner. Silas attempts to shove Medrick and bounces off. <laughs> uh, Medrick, you dive through <laughs> as well. And finally, Silas, do you hesitate at all? Nope. Okay. Passing on through. You can actually although he feel... does Although he does yell, suck it, ooze. <laughs> you do feel a strange twist as the 
uh, crystals on the outside or outer, outer ring of that particular portal seem to shift and shatter. The room as you're leaving seems to crush in on itself, uh, almost as though it's it's been co-opted in time and space. After a, only a brief second or two, though, you all pile out one after the other into the small uh, uh, area that uh, contained the uh, the warehouse, the central part of the warehouse, uh, which actually I can bring up for fun. Uh, oh, I didn't move there myself. That's silly. Mm. Uh, as you all kind of pile out now into this central uh, space, the uh, portal behind you starts to glow brighter and brighter. Uh, and you can see now that, e that elements are starting to ooze outward from it uh, and hiss when they hit the ground around, around it. Um, you feel the, or you see the little crystals wavering around it as well. And then one of them breaks off and crashes. And from that direction, a spout of energy happens. Let's see. Uh, let me see. The three of you plus two of them. So I'll roll a D8. Uh, first three are PCs. Second two are uh, the NPCs. That is Sandy. Sandy gets hit with a, uh, an energy surge. Sandy dies. Rescue yeah. failed. Thankfully, only one point. I don't know why I rolled the d5, but it doesn't really make much difference. Uh, as one point of this sort of brilliant, uh, uh, what looks like uh, uh, almost radiant energy gets pushed out from that direction. And you can see now that as the other crystals are starting to waver, this is going to probably explode. We should get out. Yeah, yeah. Move, move, move. Run away. Um, you hear a mechanic screech from up above as you realize that owl is still flying up around there somewhere, but you don't see it uh, as you make your way to the exit, I assume. Yep. Can Silas see it? Uh, no, there's a, there's another floor and it had flown up to the upper floor. Uh. Um, so you guys actually hadn't seen where it roosted and tried to hide yeah. itself. As you run into the building, you hear first uh, one explosion. There's another, another element is has uh, has broken free, uh, tearing through the north side of the building, and in fact tearing through this this building and the building next to it. This jet of, of gold and uh, silver energy, kind of twisting and turning, unleashed. Uh, another one explodes through the ceiling. You don't hear the owl any longer. <laughs> A third one seems to take out the back of the building and bits and pieces go flying into the the uh, the narrow water that's back there now. You can see the tide has come in a little bit. Uh, and finally, one jets right out through the front of the building. Uh, I will have all of you make a dexterity saving throw as this wide jet of energy uh, is unleashed. Seventeen. And a one? Really? Natural one. Oh, no. Uh, so, uh, Silas, you take uh, one point of radiant damage. Uh, Medric, you take two points of radiant damage. And Annie takes four points of radiant damage. As you kind of dodge in that way where you realize when you're halfway in the air that that was the direction it was coming from. <laughs> and you dodge I into this. I food on my face. Pretty much. Yeah, you're knocked back a few feet. Uh, as the rest of the building essentially is first expands in this in this demi globe of, of radiant energy, and then the whole thing contracts down and, and crushes in on itself, leaving nothing behind but a pile of debris. Do People I are rushing. Sit and wait. People are now rushing over to see what the hell's going on. You can see some of the, the local guardsmen are are kind of this was not what they were patrolling for <laughs> so they're they're kind of running over with a on the ground yeah yeah yeah, yeah silas flops down under the dock is like okay so the base still blew up but we did get to go back and check a room first so we're getting better <laughs> um the ground continues to rumble after this space has been been collapsed we should probably get a little further okay. away. Probably. 
Exactly. I, I stand up on his side further away. You can see waves starting to build up now um, as the water itself is churning and disturbing. And it feels as though there's an earthquake going on. Uh, what, oh, crap. Is this another arm? Somebody uh, shouts, what is that? And points up into the, uh, let's say, southwest. West-southwest, really. Uh, Silas way up, bolt upright. <laughs> way beyond the town and kind of on the ridge line up above where the town was. Uh, there is a, a, a tree that just goes flying and followed by a few more as a, uh, a large uh, bolt of, or, or, uh, boulder of rock comes, comes crashing out and kind of sails through the sky, landing on the, on the beach. Uh, someone yells out, I think that was Cedar Ridge Point. Uh, <laughs> and then massive uh, outflowing of dust. As you see kind of floating there, uh, is this strange amorphous shape, kind of oblong and covered in stone. Uh, dripping from it, you see tendrils of, of gray and black and green uh, liquids. Uh, it resembles very much uh, an internal organ of some kind. Well, that lifts up into the sky and takes out, takes off over the sea dripping a, a lines of acid and ooze across the uh, the way it it leaves permanent marks now on the dock where uh, it was uh, it was um, where it hit where it drew across uh, marigold what was that marigold doesn't seem to be paying attention he seems to be paying attention to sandy at this particular moment i i think was that a an Internal organ from a titan? Yeah, the word titan, uh, Marigold does look up, and, and Sandy looks like she was she was winded and kind of is blinking away uh, at, at kind of having been, been tossed. You can see that she actually landed on one of the piers, maybe, and looks like she got uh, pretty severely beaten from the piers, but he's been he's been casting a spell or taking time to cast a spell. At the word of t titan, though, he looks up, I'll be damned. He actually found one. And yeah, it well, disappears rapidly out to sea somewhere. Yeah, there was an arm hidden here too. Um, so I'm guessing that's Clockwinder probably gone for the moment. Hmm. That must have been what he was after all along. I can hardly believe it. Uh. He was clever, but I didn't think he was that clever. He he does have help for uh from a. Uh, the class he class shall the not one. be named. Yeah. No. Yeah, his his boss tried to raise an arm before. It's like they're trying to put it. a titan back together. Well, that's not comforting. No. Silas stands up and starts prestidigitating all the crap off him. Uh, Marigold yells off to a couple of people, a, you know, basically the a guards and a couple of people there. He's kind of gotten bossy for the moment, uh, and they they find a uh, a carpet that was basically on on the the uh, on the shore it was part of cargo for something, and they unroll it and gingerly they put uh, Sandy on it. I need to take her back to, to, to get safe. Her back took a nasty bruising there. I'm all right. I'm... Ow. Excuse me. Come see me if you need more help. You look like you're okay for the moment. Yes? Yes. Oh. But uh, we, will, hand, he, we will have things to discuss. He hands you a bottle. One of you can drink this. Just... Be careful. <laughs> and it's another bottle of the same stuff that he had made before. It's, again, kind of chunky has a couple of different colors that really shouldn't be there. Silas says, I'm good. I, I, I before he leaves, um, I think we should break it to you before you find out. But uh, what, what, what was dude's name? Dover. The... Dover, yeah. Lost in the ordeal. Lost. But he did it. 
died to find you with a rat that he caught and held on oh also uh she uh medrick uh, yeah yeah his arm <laughs> you have that in the bag right i do <laughs> I thought I left it behind somewhere. Should make more Here's a memento of your friend Dolver, his arm. Right now, it wasn't with stores. me, but he was in a bag outside of the building, and he was pointing towards it. I think. Yeah. So, so where is it, the arm walk, now? <laughs> it should be outside it, it of the would building be just somewhere. Just outside the building. So yeah. His walk so, over the bag, and so you look at the like, destroyed building that's there, and it's going to take some digging through debris if it hasn't been blasted out to sea. Well, it was outside on the it dock. Because yeah. I was walking around with it and like holding the hand or like feeling like if the hand was twitching and it twitched before this building. Roll me a D20, one of you. You'll want to get a 19 or 20. Can I cast guidance? Hey! 19. There you go. Uh, you look over to where it was, it's not there. However, when you look across the, the, the dock, you realize it's been blown across the dock and it's kind of propped up on some of the uh, cargo over there. Uh, no hand. one's no one's really noticed it at this point, but yeah. if they had, probably someone would scream when they see a, a, a yeah. large hand just sort of sitting there. Somehow uh, it's flipping the bird in the direction of the organ. <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, do you want me to carry that back to your workshop for you? That's <laughs> uh, Marigold. Marigold's looking at back, back and forth at you and it's kind of lost in thought for a second. Uh, and he hears Sandy say something. Oh, right. Well... Um, he's always been clever. Don't worry. I'm sure he'll be fine. But I will need to take the arm. All right. I'll, <laughs> I'll carry the arm back for him. There um, is the arm. <laughs> are, are you going back with him, or are you guys going to hang out for a while? I'll go back with him just to get the arm task out of the way, because I don't really want to encounter people. And it's like, what are you carrying there? It's like, nothing. What about just put it in a bag and give it to him? Yeah, but so he's I not hand you a sack. Okay. <laughs> no, I was already in a bag, though. The bag of bags. Mm -hmm. I have uh, one. Marigold directs one of the others to carry it because it's actually okay. too big for him to carry that far. Um, and then he take uh, he, again. Uh, thank you, more than I can ever express. Come see me later if you need more uh, healing. Uh, but we'll have other things to discuss, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Uh, Farvin, what have you done? Later, folks. Then he leads off the sort of uh, uh, carrying of Sandy, who catches Annie's eye on the way back. She's probably able to walk still, but she's kind of enjoying this a little bit. And so she kind of winks at you before looking, uh, oh, oh no. Yeah. As they're walking off, Silas just yells, Go talk to your sisters. <laughs> There's a sort of hand wave on the on the on the on the bundle. Um and for the moment, your friends are safe. Clockwinder has made an escape with something potentially quite devastating depending on what it actually is capable of doing. If it truly is a part of a titan, those mythical creatures were the ones that challenged the gods. You have some idea of what your foe might be up to. But there are more pressing matters. Tomorrow's the competition. And after that, there's dinner to be had. Uh -oh. For now, however... You pick yourselves up, you look at your wounds, you look at the things you've gathered, and you feel accomplished. You're going to level up, hey. and then we'll have a moment of downtime. You can describe some of the things you're going to be doing next time in either preparation for the competition or for... Uh, it'll probably just be the competition the next session, I would imagine, unless you have some other particular duties you want to do. If you have time, uh, let me know if there are options to understand the things that you have and take a closer look at the items you gathered. Yeah, he'll, once we've got a bit, he'll uh, start 
casting, detect magic, and identify and such to figure out what those things are. Okay. Uh, and we'll bring this session to a close, unless there's something else that people have right now that they'd like to talk about retaining this session. Any lingering questions? Anything I forgot to mention? I don't Just think so. Just in case I forget, I do go to report back what happened to the captain, but we can deal with that next session. Yeah. yeah. And there will be a report coming in from Cedar Ridge Point that Cedar Ridge Point no longer exists. It was a large uh, outcropping of rock that once lived there. Now it is a crater. Bam. Um, okay, one last thing. Silas will clean himself up and proceed to the, uh, uh, another villain defeated by, uh, uh, by the Phoenix champion and his friends. Many they are. <laughs> How will we get a performance check on that one as you start to build this continuance the continuing oh, le uh, legend? Uh... There you go. 20. Yay. The story is starting to go around. Another chapter in the saga of the Phoenix uh, champion uh, and his friends, <laughs> which I think Annie is content to not be named in this. Uh -huh. uh, all, and uh, although Silas, uh, you are associated with the legend simply by the telling of it. Yep. Um, I am fine with that. Uh, Silas has got to do a quick rework of the uh, performance for tomorrow to include the latest chapter. <laughs> Phoenix, Phoenix champion mm -hmm. the, the lady <laughs> yep <laughs> uh, and we'll deal with the aftermath and I'd like to, to mo what? go ahead the, the, those Check. captions are hilarious <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think it came out as cat Phoenix champion or something uh, uh, we will deal with this again end. in two more weeks and the mm -hmm. yeah uh, we'll deal with this in two more weeks on the uh, 16th of January. If you're curious about watching it live, you can do so on Sundays at 3 o'clock Atlantic time. That's generally our gathering time. The game runs until it runs. Uh, tonight, a little bit of an extra long session. It's been a little while. Uh, if you want to catch up or see what's happened before, you can also go to YouTube and watch those episodes uninterrupted. Uh, go to youtube.com slash ENCAF1 or watching them live on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. You can also go to Watchers of the Drowned Isles. We post uh, summaries of previous episodes. Uh, we I think we've been copying there. Got to make sure I copy them there for the previous weeks as well. Uh, thank you for joining us. Hope you've had fun. I hope you guys have had fun uh, on your way out of this giant thank organ. You. Uh, yes, I saw a picture Yay. of an organ went, that sounds about right. Let's do that. Why did so I? We were once again in a stomach. <laughs> uh, it was actually technically a a liver and pancreas, uh, but uh, but I was uh, thinking yeah. liver. Yeah, yeah. It, it gives Clockwinder the ability to drink infinite alcohol. <laughs> Uh, it's another piece of, of a very complicated puzzle that, that's being assembled. So, uh, and uh, yeah, again, I hope you guys had fun and we shall see you again soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs>